actually, Hank, were Warren Hoshenko, a young man born in West Germany, but was an All-American at Michigan State, will kick off. He's the left-footed kicker. Thomas is their field goal kicker, but obviously does not have the depth that this young man has. Bobby's uh, never really had the kickoff potential that a lot of kickers do, and uh, as a result of that, I think you'll see Mojenko kicking off all day for them. Herman Hunter, number 36, back to accept it. A good kickoff man. A beautiful day. Uh, about 50-some-odd thousand tickets were sold, but 60,000 can get in here and have for games with Raiders and the Broncos and what have you. The Eagles haven't been here since 1980 when Dick Vermeil took the Eagles to the Super Bowl. They lost by a point. Hunter, two yards deep in the end zone. Good coverage by, he spins out. Hunter's still on his feet and manages to get to the 19-yard line. Good effort by the young return man. Here's the Eagle offense, and it's pretty good. It's one of the best throwing the football around the league. They're, they're rated like seventh. Jaworski, Ernest Jackson, who's coming back to San Diego, where he was a pro bowler a year ago before being traded to Philadelphia. Haddix, then Kenny Jackson, Mike Wick, and John Spagnola, who's heading for the Pro Bowl himself this year. Reeves, Steve Kenny, Dennard, Ron Baker, and big Leonard Mitchell at right tackle. You're looking at Jaws, number seven. Jaworski throwing and has a lot of time. Wide open receiver overthrown at the 45-yard line. Herman Hunter circled out of the backfield and was flat wide open. Looks like they're just trying to go for it early, you know, rookie. Well, they're said to be the worst defense. They might be at that with that first coverage. Lee Williams at left defensive end. Chuck Ian, who's a defensive end playing nose tackle. And Earl Wilson at right end. Lyndon King Green, number one draft from two years ago, Billy Ray Smith and Woodrow Lowe, a very fine veteran linebacker. Hendy, Walters, Bird, and Dale, all good, talented young players, but they are young. Second down and 10, but whoo, almost a touchdown on the first throw. The inside crossbuck play to Ernest Jackson. Jackson running hard, gets a first down to the 33. Here's a fellow that last year led the AFC in rushing, was the most valuable player on the San Diego Charger team, went to the Pro Bowl, and suddenly was second of September was traded to Philadelphia. It's got to be hard for him to figure out, but you know, really, when you look at what San Diego did in regard to picking up Anderson and Tim Spencer, it made sense for them to, to get the extra draft choices, so I think it worked out well for both sides. And they are pass catchers, and Jackson probably is not a great pass catcher, yeah, right? First and 10 after a 14-yard gain by Ernest Jackson. Jaworski straight back. He's got time, and it's complete to the 41-yard line. Michael Quick. You know, one of the things you notice about Jaworski is he's looking off receivers. He looked right, then threw back to the left. And that's a key, I think, you know, many young quarterbacks don't do that. They look at that primary receiver, and that's it. Three years in a row, number 82 has gone over 1,000 yards in receptions. Breaking the old record of Tommy McDonald. I think Tommy did it in 61 and 62, and Quick is the new leader in that category. He's a great young receiver. Second down and two. Eagles with the opening kickoff, and they've got something going. Ernest Jackson may have gotten to the first down, but by about the length of the ball if he did. You know, one of the things that uh, on that play, they tried a little inside trap with the right guard coming around the center, and that's a little dangerous when you get down in there and it's short yardage. You really should give yourself an opportunity to blow people off the ball and not be setting your offensive lineman back. That's probably one of the problems with San Diego is that they pass block so often when they have to run, they probably can't get the technique. Down. That's right. It's a, new, it's a new situation for them then. Marion Campbell, the Swamp Fox, in his third year replacing Dick Vermeil. He thinks he's within three or four players of really having a good club here. He That's right. a yard short. When you look at the way things have turned out for them this season, uh, all it takes is a couple of breaks here and there, and uh, they're right in the thick of things. You know, Marion doesn't hug you after a win, but he doesn't uh, he doesn't go around and give you a phony hug if you lose either. So he's always kept a little distance as a head coach, and I guess every head coach should be there themselves. That's right. Third down and call it one. It's a short one. Haddox and Jackson in the backfield. Short yardage. It's going to be a first down Eagles as the Chargers jumped. It's Chuck Ian. I'm sure he's a little upset about that. You know, one of the things that a lot of offensive linemen will do is just kind of 
what a lot of offensive linemen will do is shake that hand a little bit, and the official can't see it, but it sure draws those defensive guys offside. Don Coriel, been here since the fourth game of 1978. He had great teams with St. Louis in the mid-70s. He won the NFC East a couple of times, and he is an offensive master. He absolutely is, and everybody who talks football knows what Don Coriel is capable of putting together offensively. Under some little pressure here, the team is 7-7. Seven and seven. They need to get better than that in the AFC West. Jaworski on first and 10. Good catch. Short of the 40-yard line by John Spagnola, and he took that right out of the interceptor's hands. You know, Brookie, one of the things that Philadelphia has been good at all year is pass protection, and we're going to get an excellent opportunity to see it here. Now watch Jaworski. He's going to roll just a slight bit to the right. Good protection, clean vision, vision down the field, and he hooks up with John Spagnola. Excellent play. And, of course, you said that because you Ivy Leaguers stick together, Spagnola being from Yale. And well, you know, I like to, like to tell everybody the number one and two tight ends in the league in terms of receptions are from the Ivy League. <laughs> you say it, big fella. I believe it's an 11-yard gain by Spagnola. Here's the power outside run by Jackson inside the 40 to 39. Good defensive play by Billy Ray Smith. One of the interesting things about San Diego that we're going to try to watch today is how they play the outside run. Do they try to string it out and get the running back to run to the sideline, or do they allow the offense the opportunity to turn it up? And if they do, they're going to have problems with the run all day. Is this an advantage, uh, playing San Diego, not to have their offense even on the field yet? Is it nice to have these long drives with your offense if you, if you get points at the end so Fouts doesn't have the ball? Well, that's right. Anytime you can keep the ball from uh, the San Diego offense, you're in good shape. You're safe for a while. <laughs> Second down and six. Eagles are driving with the opening kickoff. Being raced. This is number Spagnola, number 88. Jaworski gets knocked down, but gets it to the tight end, almost to the 25-yard line. And one of the things that happened on that was uh, Jaworski had a little bit of pressure from Earl Wilson, uh, but was able to get the ball off to John Spagnola. You see Spagnola cutting in the middle of your screen. He's looking for the ball. He's got it now. Turns it up with good positive yardage, and he's going to get stuck a little bit going out of bounds. Looked like the linebackers got picked off. It looked like they ran crossing patterns and, and scraped and allowed Spagnola to get free. Huh? That's right, if, especially if they figure they're playing man-to-man. -man, they know they can uh, run them into one another. Spagnola came in with 59, so you've been counting. He's now got 61. A 14-yard gain, first and 10. Ernest Jackson covering the ball up. Down to the 21-yard line of San Diego. Notice how Jackson, who is one of the least uh, guys to fumble in the entire league, covers it up with both arms when he gets ready to get hit. Well, you know, he said he prides himself on the fact that he uh, he does not fumble the ball. He's only fumbled uh, last year three times, and this year three times, and over 300 touches of the ball. So uh, he feels that if he, if he drops the ball on the turf, he's really letting everybody down, uh, and their families and everyone else associated with the team. Pretty serious guy. Likes Philadelphia. Second down and seven. The blitz coming from San Diego. They don't do a lot of it. The fake. Hunter has it out in the flat. Out of bounds and to stop the clock. Again, the San Diego offense has not had a snap yet. You know, almost on that play, it really looked like San Diego shouldn't have blitzed. They left uh, Hunter wide open on the swing pass, and he went down for good yardage. Dallas 28 to 14 over the Giants. They're playing for, of course, for the outright title in this NFC Eastern Division. And the Eastern Division of the NFC is better against all other divisions than any other division in the NFL. This is tough football. Third down and two. Jaworski on the spread out. Dumps it to Haddix in the flat. Fumbles the football out of bounds. A big break for the Eagles on the natural grass turf. The ball bounced laterally, and Haddix is slow getting up. Boy, Michael Haddix on this play takes a shot. Now, we're going to get an opportunity to see it here. Here's Jaworski rolling out right again. Quick pass. Haddix turns around and, and tries to get upfield, but now he's going to get stuck. Watch me. He leaps over, and then he gets popped. That'll make anybody give up the football. Billy Ray Smith trailing the play from the right inside linebacking spot really hit Haddix. Now, a week ago, well, we'll talk about what happened a week ago when the Eagles lost to Washington. Right now, they're driving on San Diego. No score, though. Former Chicago Bear tackle Dan Jiggins. We're in San Diego, where we have no score, but the Eagles have had the ball the entire first quarter so far. St. Louis leading the Rams 7-0 in the first quarter. 
27-24. The Redskins hang in there. The NFC East is not over yet, folks. First and goal from the eight-yard line. Eleventh play of the drive. Major Everett is in. Haddix was helped off. Jaworski out in the flat to Major Everett at the 10. Spins and gets almost to the five-yard line. Hit hard by Bird. You know, Tom, not much has changed with the way Ted Marchabroda likes to run an offense. He's the offensive coordinator of the Philadelphia Eagles. And I remember when he was our coordinator with the Chicago Bears. Same kind of offense. He likes to roll that quarterback slightly, set him up between the guard and tackle, and let him read the field. And it's the kind of offense where you can always kind of dump off to the backs coming out of the backfield. The offense has scored 26 of 30 some odd times, but I'll tell you, down here close, lately, the Eagles have not really produced. Major Everett and Ernest Jackson are in there on second and goal from the five. Jackson, no way, gets to the maybe two and a half yard line. At one time this year, the Eagles had to run 40 offensive plays to score a touchdown, and that's about last in the league. On this play, watch number 63, the right guard, Baker. Now, he's going to come around the hole and meet Billy Ray Smith head on, and watch Billy Ray deliver the blow. He put a big guy down. Nice play, though. Brings up third down, and the ball is closer to the four than the three. And things do tighten up. Remember, the San Diego offense hasn't been introduced yet. Drop back. Touchdown. Spagnola diving into the end zone. You know, one of the interesting things about this is at least it took Philadelphia a long time to score. They're keeping the San Diego offense off the field, and as a result of that, you know, it's going to be very hard for San Diego to get on the board. Spagnola limping somewhat as the receiver of that touchdown pass. McFadden will try the extra point. Jaworski holds it. McFadden, the barefooted one, kicks it through. The last extra point that, that the young man McFadden missed, that's right, Miami blocked it a year ago, and it cost the Eagles the game. The third all-time passer in National Football League history, Dan Fouts. McFadden kicking off. Anderson waiting for it. It's going to be taken on the left side by number 40. That's Gary Anderson. He had a 98-yard TD return against Denver early in the year, but the Eagles covered well. Here is the San Diego offense, the number one passing offense in all of football. Dan Fouts from 73 on. He is the best pure passer perhaps in this game. Lionel James, who can do everything. Tim Spencer from the USFL. Joyner, Chandler, and Kellen Winslow, who is now full speed. Lachey, White, Masick, Leonard, and McKnight. They are patched up on the offensive right side. You know what he's doing. And he's completing it. Just into Eagle territory goes Wes Chandler. And Fouts draws blood right away. the Eagle defense, the best against the pass. Reggie White with 10 sacks, Kenny Clark at nose tackle, he's got a sore shoulder, and Greg Brown with 11 sacks. Wilkes, Reichenbach, Anthony Griggs, who's on a bad ankle, and Gary Cobb, the steadying influence in the secondary, one of the best. Edwardson, Roynell Young, Ellis, and Wes Hopkins is getting healthier all the time. A toss back to number 43, that's Tim Spencer. Spencer is run out by Ellis after a couple of yards. You know, one of the interesting things that San Diego's done by picking up Tim Spencer is getting a, a back who's a legitimate fullback with good speed and the ability to really bust that ball up in the middle or take it outside. So they give themselves an opportunity to do more things offensively. Yep, he can catch it too. He, he's a very strong, uh, look at the arms on him. Yeah, so those are some nice sized guns for a running back. <laughs> San Diego offense last week, you heard that the over bet on that day was 54-44. That's 98 points if you do those kind of things. Second down and eight. Bounce, second pass, complete. Chandler laterals. And Wes Chandler steps out on about the 43-yard line. We're going to get an opportunity to, to see Pete Holohan catch the ball and turn back, flip it back to Wes Chandler. Many times these plays will go for big yardage on this occasion it really didn't because the defense was playing it very well here you, you'll see west chandler get drilled out of bounds Looked like they had a zone ro rolled up on that side and the uh, ray also is make, able to make the stop 
good play, though, and it shows you that this offense, they just fool with running the ball, but they love to throw it. Third down and three in Eagle territory. Bounce complete. Joyner catches inside the 35 to the 34. The most completions in a career moves Fouts past John Unitas and back of Fran Tarkington. And the crowd is notified. In 1973, they took John Unitas out of a Charger uniform and gave the ball to Dan Fouts. And Fouts' all-time idol was John Unitas. Since then, it's history. First and ten. And not always with great ball clubs. The reverse, the flea flicker, back to Fouts. Going deep for him. in the end zone. Well, I tell you what, rookie, one more step and Gary Anderson had a touchdown. It's really a shame. It was a beautifully executed play. Oh, you see Dan Fouts handoff, gets the ball flipped back to him by Buford McGee, looks down for a pump fake, and now he's going deep. Gary Anderson is in full stride, but just unable to get to the football. One more step and he'd have had it. But he was open in the end zone. And Fouts is the kind of guy he is, he will come out and if he throws an interception, he'll come right back and gun it again. That's right, and you see Gary Cobb had to cover uh, Anderson all the way to the end zone. That's a lot for a linebacker to do. That's dangerous. Second down and 10, overthrowing and just missing Lionel James, the guy they call Little Train. Five foot six. Well, you know, he doesn't have very far, only 268 yards, I believe it is, to go to break Terry Metcalf's all-purpose uh, record in the, in the National Football League. That's kickoff, punt return yardage, rushing, and pass catching. He leads the San Diego in all four categories. That's right. Team. San Francisco finally getting started. It gets rid of the New Orleans Jinx, 31 to 19. They are alive still. Minnesota's out of the playoffs. If we didn't know that before, we know it now. It's 14 to 13. Third down and 10. Out stalled out somewhat now. Trying for Joyner, who slipped down where there's no grass in the middle of the infield out there. And the ball just went aimlessly by. The oldest and most productive wide receiver of all time. He's an old young man. You know, Charlie Joyner's been going at it for so many years. I can remember back when I was in high school he was playing. But uh, <laughs> he still looks like he's got maybe about another two or three years left in him, Tom. 710 catches. He came over from Cincinnati in 1976. For Coy Bacon. Coy Bacon. <laughs> Good point. You remember those linemen, don't oh, you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Moshenko now will try a field goal. No, pardon me. He is punting from midfield on the 50. He used to be a field goal kicker at Michigan State. Both of our punters today, Horan and Moshenko, are left-footed. Time called by San Diego. The drive stalled out, but Fouts, as Don Coriel likes to do, is going to air it out today. You know, people always wonder why... Uh, a team will take a penalty like this, a, a five-yard delay of game penalty. It's because that punter wants to be able to get that ball up in the air and put it out inside the 20 without going into the end zone. It makes a lot of sense if you're, uh, you got a real good punter who's accurate. Moshenko, Moshenko has had 10 inside the 20, none blocked this year. He beat out Buford, the incumbent kicker in training camp. So let's see what he does with this. Cooper is back for the Eagles. Drilled it toward the right coffin corner. See where they mark it. They're inside the 15-yard line. Seven nothing, Philadelphia. We showed you earlier when Dan Fouts went by John Unitas to be behind Fran Tarkington, but of the active quarterbacks, Fouts is number one. Kenny Anderson, Cincinnati, Joe Ferguson, and Ron Jaworski of the Eagles is number four with 25,000 yards coming in. Joss is an old war horse. You know he's going to do it every time out there. He was drafted the same year that Dan Fouts was by the Rams. Ron was. First and ten for the Eagles. Jaworski dancing, throws the ball away, trying for Mike Quick. 
You know, Tom, that time we saw something that uh, San Diego desperately needs, and that's Chuck Ian actually making progress to the quarterback and landing on Ron Jaworski's feet. If they're going to be successful defensively today, they've got to have that kind of pressure. Dallas wins the NFC East 28 21 over the Giants and the Cowboys got a lot of breaks but they won the game they had to win. Pittsburgh 30 Buffalo 24. Well, the Steelers have been on a roller coaster this year. Remember they scored 44 points against San Diego and lost by 10 a week ago. Jackson on the toss. Good defense short of the 10 yard line. Boy the crowd reacts like they haven't seen much of that. <laughs> This is excellent lateral pursuit by the San Diego Chargers. If Jackson is able to break through the, the initial barrier on the line of scrimmage, he could be going for good yardage. But you'll see the pursuit coming from the backside just drills him and knocks him down. You know, we were talking to Chuck Weber, the former Eagle player, by the way, who's also the linebackers coach out here. And he told us they're so darn young and so new. They've got 21 new players on the San Diego team. So you just can't do it overnight. That's right. You really can't. It takes a period of adjustment. Third down and 10. Jaworski's in the shotgun. And they've got the nickel package in on defense, and they're going to come after Ron Jaworski. No pressure. Jaworski, good throw. Out to about the 21-yard line to Herman Hunter. Now, that's a graphic example, Tom, of what happens when you don't get the pressure. And he's got the opportunity to read the whole field, and he's able to find the open receiver. And that also explains why Hunter's getting a lot of playing time on throwing situations over Ernest Jackson. He has good hands coming out of the backfield. A 13-yard catch by Herman Hunter. Washington still in the race for the NFC East wild card. 27-24, and they spotted the Bengals 21 points. Last couple of weeks are going to be in off the wall. First and 10 for the Eagles, out of the eye. Jackson tackled at the 20-yard line. And fumble, let's see if they call a fumble. I think they ruled him down, actually, Tom, before he dropped the ball. Lee Williams had Ernest Jackson wrapped up, but that ball came out pretty early. You know, this young bunch is, is getting a little excited. I think maybe they've been listening to what everyone has been saying about them. And, you know, they get a little insulted, too. Defenses have, have a lot of character, and when you insult them too many times, you know, they, they get a little nasty about it. There's Swamp Fox. He started out with five sticks of gum, and he had a whole week's gum in to start this game. <laughs> he wants to finish with an 8-8 eight eight season. Week's loss really tough, and the week before that, when Minnesota beat them, unbearable. Second down and 11. Is the blitz coming? It's coming. Jaworski unloads and throws behind Mike Quick and almost had it picked off. Now Danny Walters had a shot at it. They had great force on Jaworski that time up the middle. And we're going to get a chance to see Mike Quick do his stuff. Nice little inside fake. He slows up, doesn't let him read the pattern. Comes back inside, but it's behind him. Too bad. Dave Little is in there at tight end now. Spagnola limping a little bit like it might be his knee. Everybody is playing bandaged up at this stage. Don't yeah, you you, the toughest part of the season is always the end where you're taking that abuse over the course of uh, 14, 15 weeks. You're getting paid a lot of money. And pro football is a great way to make a living. So you go out and you give it your best shot. From the shotgun on third and 11. Oh, just misses Hunter coming across the middle. And the San Diego defense held. That time, uh, Fred Robinson gave him excellent pressure from the uh, from the left-hand side of the, of the offense and gave uh, Ron Jaworski a little bit of a shot in the back. And that's what he's got to do. He's on that uh, speed-rushing side. He's got to come and go after that quarterback today. Michael Horan now from Southern California. A lot of his friends are here. He's an aeronautical engineer that got in certainly the wrong way of life playing football back to run it back is the little train Lionel James on his own 40 and looked out for this young man this is not a great kick but it might be effective and the Eagles get a bounce San Diego will start on their own 37 and Lionel didn't get to handle it a 42 yard punt and the little train slows down it's 7 nothing Philadelphia You might think a computer that doesn't cost a lot, doesn't do a lot. Today on CBS, it all begins with the blue-gray all-star football game. Some of the nation's top seniors, Navy's Napoleon McCallum, what a great running back he is. You saw him last week. And Alan Pinkett of Notre Dame. And then the NBA returns, 
Larry Bird, Bill Walton, the Celtics against Patrick Ewing, the Knicks, right here on CBS on Christmas Day. It's a good afternoon of sports there. Fouts back to throw. What else? Overthrowing and into the Eagles bench, trying for Lionel James. I think the sun was right in his eyes. He maybe didn't see that That's ball. Right. You know, one of the other things that I noticed in that play, Tom, was the fact that uh, Dan Fouts is going back to what he did against uh, Pittsburgh on, on uh, Sunday night, pump faking once and then trying to get that ball down the sideline. And this little train, there he he's is. He's definitely the little engine that can. <laughs> <laughs> The total yardage leader and tried to set a record and may just do it. He's so small in the locker room the other day, I thought uh, <laughs> he was somebody's son. A ball boy. <laughs> Second down and 10. Lone back gets a straight ahead drive, goes Tim Spencer. Here are the numbers on the man they call the little train. Start number 55. 937 receiving. 470 rushing, 185 on punt returns, and 602 returning kicks. Uh, and he only needs a few yards to break Lenny Moore's receiving record as a running back, which is something that, uh, you know, you look at the guy his size, you really have to appreciate what he's been able to do this year. Quite a little fella. Playing with a big boy. Just missing number 80, Kellen Winslow. Why doesn't Fouts go for Kellen Winslow the way he did 80-81. Well, you know, I, I think Kellen's trying to figure that out also. Uh, he kind of indicated he was a little disappointed the ball hadn't come more uh, to him this year. But, uh, you know, sometimes the offense changes. You get more weapons to go with. Kellen told us yesterday from the team picture in 79, his first year, there are only eight players on this San Diego team that were here in 79. Cleveland wins the AFC Central 28-21, and Houston fought them all the way into the ground. Tough division. Don't count them out when you get into playoff time. Moshinsky, tricky. Cooper's going to let it bounce. Now he takes it at the 15 and steps out of bounds. Good field position since the ball didn't roll inside the 10. And there's Mojenko. Well, you know, it's got to be a little bit uh, tougher on a, on a punter to have to do the kicking off also. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of teams don't want their punter to kick off or their, their uh, kicker to have to do the uh, punting. It's on Saturday at 3.30 Eastern Time, the NFL Today presents a special show. How has the NFL changed in the last 20 years? A lot more money for one thing. That's, <laughs> the league has gone through dramatic growth, though. New equipment, new playing conditions, new economic growth. Is the game better now than before? We'll find out on the NFL Today at 3.30 Eastern Time on CBS. That's Saturday. I'm going to watch that myself. Yeah, I've got to find out what the changes are. Sack is Jaworski. Woody Lowe. Woody Lowe read this play from the beginning. He came in tough, defeated the block, and made an excellent stop. Woody Lowe is, uh, is one of the better linebackers that San Diego has. Here you see him coming in. Uncheck jumps over the, the block, and now he's back inside, throwing Ron Jaworski to the ground. A couple more yards, he had a safety. Only the 37th sack for the San Diego Chargers. And you know, this guy in 10 years has only missed seven games he out is, of Alabama. He is really incredible. And you know, the coaching staff indicated to us the other day that uh, he, they feel that he's one of their top players on defense. The Chargers defense playing well at second and 19. The Eagles are deep in their own territory. Jackson gets to the 10 and no more. The crowd really responding to good defensive play. You know, the other thing I think they may be responding to is the fact that Ernest Jackson uh, is a guy who's very well respected here in San Diego, and it's it's got to be a charge for him to come out and play against his old team, and I'm sure he wants to do very well today. They're trying to rebuild a defense out here, but why don't they ever get it done? Is that a crazy question to ask, Dan? Well, you know, sometimes you have to think about what a team concentrates on, and it appears that San Diego concentrates a great deal on offense. You just never know what goes on in practice, but uh, you have to take the indications where they lie. Third down and 15. Jaworski in the shotgun. Jaworski from his own one drills it in there. It's going to be pretty close to a first down. Mike Quick tumbling there. There are a few boos now for the defensive secondary. And the crowd doesn't like that one. Now we're going to see Mike Quick coming across. Look at the top of your screen. Releases off the ball. And let's see what kind of a defense they're playing that zone again, and that's what gets him in trouble every time. There's Mike Quick right in the middle of your screen. Coriel realizing that Jaworski is on. Last week against the Redskins, Ron Jaworski was not an on quarterback. Today, he is throwing very sharply. First and 10, the Eagles out of the hole with a 16-yarder. Mike Quick trying to go to Honolulu at the end of this year and early next year. 
to the Pro Bowl. Jaworski. On your throws, Kenny Jackson, but maybe he came up with it, did he? They're going to call it a catch. The Penn Stater may have gotten away with one. You know, Ron's getting a little bit of pressure from that backside again, and that's the danger side. And here we're going to get a chance to see whether or not this ball was caught. It was. He, well, it looks a little bit like he may have scooped it with his hands down on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to give him the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> And so, it's an eagle lead, 7-0 over San Diego at the end of one. Larry Bird. San Diego, we're at 7-0 Philadelphia, and this guy's got a homecoming. Sid Gilman was the head coach here, 60 through 69, and then in 71, he came back again. He had five Western titles here, including the title win in 63 in the old AFL. And he was called out of retirement to help Teddy Marshall go to work with Ron Jaworski and Young Cunningham. Well, Sidney, something else. We had him with the Bears for a year or two. Uh, tremendous guy. Incredible person. First and 10 scramble by Jaworski. Dunks it. Spagnola can hang on. It's intercepted at the 50. Mike Green has it. A turnover, and it goes to San Diego. Steve Kenny got in a little bit of trouble in that play early. He was losing his man inside. Ron Jaworski had to take off to the outside running. And as a result of that, they threw the ball away. Flags are down on about the San Diego, pardon me, the Philadelphia 32. It may well be that Steve Kinney got called for holding on that play. 73, offense, penalty decline, first down. I, I hate to see those offensive linemen get caught holding down. <laughs> you mean you hate to see him get called for it, right? <laughs> A great leaping interception brings Coriel up. And Don Coriel, at least yesterday and the day before, seemed as relaxed as I've ever seen him. There's Green. What a catch. He even spiked it. It was such a good interception. <laughs> Just for emphasis. <laughs> Fouts with the ball now in Eagle territory at the 41-yard line, first and 10. Lone back gets it, Spencer. Maybe a yard or two. <laughs> Turnovers are the name of this game. Six wins. The Eagle offense only had six turnovers in eight losses, 28 turnovers. And if anybody ever wonders whether or not the giveaways and takeaways make a difference, that graphic there proves that it does. Incredible. The Eagles with a 7-0 lead. They had the ball 12 minutes in that first quarter. The Fouts has got it maybe humming here. Second down, seven. Dumps it over. Hollahan there at the 32-yard line. Again, we remarked that Kellen Winslow just doesn't get the football very much anymore. Well, you know, one of the things that may be, Brookie, is you think about the type of injury that Kellen had and what it takes mentally to come back from a devastating injury like that. It's got to play on your mind a little bit. Maybe now, you know, with an offseason behind him and the, the rehab of that offseason, he'll be a full force uh, next year. He's got 23 catches and no touchdown. That's incredible. A couple of years ago, he was the most devastating receiver I've ever seen. The toss goes back to Spencer. Third down and one. First down. Crowd lucky. Boy, well, I tell you what, Kevin Winslow just did something that many times has missed. He got an excellent shot on the cornerback and put him to the ground. Let's get a chance to see it here. Here's coming out of the backfield. He goes in motion. Now just watch this block that he puts on Ray Ellis. Now he's going to put him to the ground. He had a little bit of a hole in the jersey, but I mean, that's to be expected, right? That's the way you tackle teach people to block. <laughs> He's doing it all, and according to the Eagle people I talked with, Chuck Clawson and all, they said he looked like he was 100%. And he is a, a six foot five receiver with great speed. Fouts in the flat. That's a lateral. He can throw a pass. That's Holohan. Oh, throwing Joyner in the end zone. It appears that Charlie Joyner tripped just as he was turning to go back up into the end zone. Just too bad. From Fouts to Holohan to incomplete. You won't see Charlie Joyner do that too many times. Here we're going to get a chance to see him. He stumbles right here just as he's going in and can't get to the ball. Yeah, Holohan really hummed it too, let's be honest. Yeah, he did. You know, we saw that play the other day in practice and he threw a duck. <laughs> <laughs> Pressure quarterback. The Chargers claim they should be 11 wins. Instead of seven, they've had four or five games just get away from them. And they're mad about it today. It looks like they mean business. Second down and ten. Bounce. Flagging it now going deep. And overthrowing everybody. Wes Hopkins, the nearest person to the ball. 
But you know, when Fouch gets up. One of the things Dan Fouch does so well is the, the small technique type things. That time he, he faked inside. If you watch the two inside middle linebackers, boy, they were coming right up in there thinking and run. And then all of a sudden they realize it's passing. and you see him trying to take off and get back outside. We were talking to Wes Hopkins about it yesterday, and he said he gets off the first receiver if he's covered and comes to somebody else as fast as any quarterback they've ever seen. And he knows that offense so well, he knows he's going to be open on any given uh, defense. We might see that right now. It's third down and ten. Eagle defense beginning to stiffen up. Bendris is in. Ball not thrown very well, but somehow Joyner got his hands on it, but it's incomplete. Bree that, Wilson almost got an opportunity to intercept the there. We're going to look at Bernard Wilson. He says, hey, just one more step and I'd have had it. Here we're going to get a look at this uh, this play. And then let's look at the secondary and see what they're doing back there. They are going to play in that deep zone. You see those guys back. And there it goes. Just too bad. Bernard Wilson was in position to stop the long play. Thomas will come in. Bob Thomas trying a 46 yard field goal. He has not had a great year. He's 14 of 23. Let's see if this one goes. It does. The 15th field goal for the former Chicago Bear. Wow, that's a strange way for San Diego to score. It's 7 to 3. Over 50,000 people here in the sunshine just watched Bobby Thomas hit the longest San Diego field goal, the 45-yarder officially to make it 7-3. Moshinko is kicking off the left footer now who belts it. Good depth to the two-yard line. Herman Hunter for the Eagles. Better put that ball away. Herman Hunter is nailed at the 15. Good coverage by San Diego. You know, number 55, Gary Nelson, made the stop on that play. And, uh, as the coaching staff indicated to us this week, he's their headhunter on the special teams. Was in on 21 stops or plays last last week on the special teams, and that's incredible. Of course, during the week, he had a little bit of pain to deal with. Nebraska. There he makes a stop. Former linebacker on All-American out of Nebraska. I keep expecting the Chargers to stabilize because I think they've got some real good people on this team, but they're awfully young. That's right. I think that, you know, another year or two under their belts, that defense is going to come around pretty well for them. Jaworski from the 15-yard line. Inside handoff to the fullback, Major Everett, who's in there. Haddock's left early in the first quarter, and we haven't seen him back in there since. Tom, let's see what the uh, Philadelphia Eagles have planned on offense on this on this series of downs. Let's see if, whether or not they're going to try to burn up that clock a little bit and keep that San Diego offense off the field. The way they're going to burn it up is by running the football successfully like they did just now. Marion Campbell. Thought by the people in football to be the finest defensive strategist perhaps it's ever been in the NFL. His teams, uh, especially under Dick Vermeil squad, that they just close people down to about 14 points a game for season after season. Amazing. Long County, the left defensive end seemed to jump, or did Leonard Mitchell? Leonard Mitchell drew him off a little bit, and uh, you know he's just trying to make that quick adjustment right before the snap, but he was a little early. Full start, number 74, offense. Second down. When you're 295 pounds, it's hard to get away with it. <laughs> you got to try to hide a little bit amongst the big guys. Here we're going to see him, number 74, just raises up a little bit. But you got to remember those <laughs> defensive guys can tee off on you when you do that. That's right. Cover up. <laughs> Jaworski is 10 of 15 for 98 yards, and it's second down and 12. The blitz is on, but it's picked up. He has time and finds Kenny Jackson stepping out of bounds at the 30-yard line. You know, yesterday, uh, Kenny Jackson mentioned to us why it's so important for Philadelphia to win these two, the, their two remaining games. One of the keys, he said, is the fact that they like their coaching staff. They want those people around, and they want to keep winning for them. And they've got some professional professionalism amongst the team. Guys feel that, hey, we're getting paid to do this thing, so let's go out and do our jobs and win these football games. Well, they do like their coaching staff, and... Uh, that can sometimes arouse a team in the last two games, even though you're not going for any playoffs, can be really something. It makes that offseason a little bit more bearable. Philadelphia with a big edge in first downs. That was a 17-yard reception by Kenny Jackson. Jaworski back to throw. Across the middle, Jackson makes a real good catch at the 48-yard line. And that ball was really hummed by Jaworski. Good offensive blocking. They're protecting it pretty well. They really are. You know, it almost looks like uh, Ron Jaworski is throwing against the air in an air drill. He's standing out there, not a lot of space around him, and he's able to see the whole field. 
Look at excellent pass protection. Look at Reeves push his man inside. Joris is just standing back there throwing just like a practice. Let me ask you this. Do you think the lifestyle is different here for a football player than, let's say, in Philadelphia or Chicago or something? Well, you know, I always feel that it makes you a little bit tough when you have to come out and it's 20 degrees <laughs> below zero. <laughs> they don't even have to wear uh, long pants out here to go to practice. It's so nice. These guys go out and get in the $50,000 automobiles and head off up into the rocks. It's amazing. Major Everett straight ahead to just about midfield. I sometimes wonder, though, if you're, if you're a pass offensive ball club yourself, in your own practices, you're going seven and get seven. Your defensive line play is probably not as tough as some other places. So that too, and the fact that you're not teeing off on one another on the run, blo on run blocking, you have to develop some kind of an attitude, and it has to be nasty if you're going to be an offensive or a defensive lineman. The defense of the Eagles huddled around to get instructions on how do you keep Dan Fouts under wraps. So far, they've done a darn good job of it. Second down eight. He rushed and gets it off anyway. Spagnola inside the 35 to the 31. He got Jeff a little bit of, making a tackle. He got a little bit of backside pressure that time from Fred Robinson, but uh, he got the ball off in time, so it didn't affect the throw. There's John Spagnola. Here you're going to see the pressure coming from the right-hand side of your screen. Watch on the outside, number 90. Fred Robinson is coming around tough. Ron Jaworski can't see him, but... The longer a quarterback's around, the longer he knows that somebody's closing in on him. Well, there he hooks up with Spagnola. Chuck Bednarik took me up to Bethlehem the other day, which is the hometown of Spagnola and Chuck Bednarik. And those people up there, uh, you know, Spag could, he could run for mayor. I mean, there wouldn't even be anybody else. It would be uncontested. I, I tell you what, Tom, I had the, uh, the delightful experience of playing with John Spagnola's brother at Harvard, and uh, he was our center. And what a guy. He was just a great person. Players down is Billy Ray Smith. The number one draft from two years ago. We'll keep you informed. It's 7-3 Philadelphia. Billy Ray Smith, the Arkansas Razorback, being helped off. He helped on the tackle of Spagnola. Looks like he got something on the lower right leg. Well, I saw when he made his adjustment, he kind of his legs kind of split, and it looked like he was limping right after that. Uh, as, as a result, Derry Nelson comes in to replace him. Derry Nelson, number 55 in the middle of your screen. He is the young man we watched on the kickoff from Nebraska. Now he's getting some playing time. It's first and 10 for the Eagles. Jaworski's having a very, very good first half. Long calling. Everybody got back. He's got time. It dumps it over, and it's in and out of Hunter's hands. Hunter was going to get wrapped and might have just taken his eye off that ball. That's right. He, I think he felt Vince Osby coming, closing in on him, and uh, just took his eye off the ball just for a brief second. They did have an outside blitz that time, by the way, and, you know, that's something we were talking about earlier, is whether or not they're going to try some different things to put a little bit more pressure on Ron Jaworski rather than just rushing three players. Here we've all come to see Dan Fouts have another 300-yard day. He comes in with... 44 or something like that, and Jaworski is the one that's sort of putting lights on the board up there. Interesting. Second down and 10. The blitz is on, and Jaworski is sacked at the 43-yard line. Lee Williams was first, but he had help. That's right. You know, he's, they're starting to put that pressure up the field and, and closing that pocket down on Ron Jaworski, and that's something that they have to do. We're going to get another peek at it here. And watch just in the, on the left-hand side of your screen. Here comes Lee Williams coming towards the center of the screen now, unchecked, and he oh, runs right over Ron Jaworski. Come here. Well, a couple of guys got in there. What do you do <laughs> to party. take pressure like that off? Do you screen or draw or run something special? Well, sort of... The thing that you have to do is have your lineman know who they're supposed to block, and that time he, was, he ran in unblocked, <laughs> and they just kind of fanned out. You can't do that. Get their concentration span, even if it's only 20 seconds. That's make right. sure they know who the heck they're blocking. It's third down and 20. Out of the shotgun. Jaworski being rambling, dumps it off to Hunter, who gets away from a tackler and gets to almost the 25-yard line. McPherson shoved him out. Billy Ray Smith stretched out. It might be more serious than we originally thought, and we're not trying to do orthopedic diagnosis is from up here. He looks like he's in a little bit of pain. Now. McFadden will come in, the most accurate field goal kicker in the game right now. 22 of 25, and he will be trying a 43-yard field goal. Jaworski is holding. Obviously, uh, the barefoot of uh, McFadden feels pretty good on that match with grass. He hooked 
left it left it is no go San Diego gets the ball it's seven to three Philadelphia Teleflow. Well, <laughs> well, I think one of the problems was you'll see Ron Jaworski reach up for the snap and then try to get it back down in place. And any little thing can throw a kicker off. And there he slides a little bit just as he's coming through. That's Horan the punter, but young McFadden is over there. Here are the teams that are alive in the NFC. <laughs> Ten and four, the Rams. Dallas, 10 and five. The Giants, nine, six, along with San Francisco and Washington. Clinched, only two teams, the Rams and Dallas. Rams, of course, leading St. Louis 13 to 7. They would win their division and certainly clinch everything. But we have seen the Rams, at least I have a lot this year, and they can be real good and real bad. We just got a report that uh, Billy Ray Smith uh, twisted his, his back and is not expected to come back today. A twisted back for Billy Ray Smith. First and 10 for Fouts. In and out and almost intercepted. Warnell Young took it right out of the hands of Wes Chandler. Well, I tell you, we're talking six if Warnell keeps this one in his hands. He had nothing in front of him except green field. <laughs> okay, we're going to get another shot at it. You'll watch it pop out of his, out of the receiver's hands, and Warnell is just in position to pick it up and get going, but uh, he had to jump over him, and that's what caused a little bit of a problem for him. San Diego has only had the ball for a little over five minutes. The Eagles have had it for 16 minutes, but they only had the one touchdown. It's second down and 10. The toss. Back to Spencer. Spencer is gang tackled at the 20. Reggie Wilkes was first to get there and did a heck of a job. He really did. You know, he got in between the, the pulling guards and, and upset the play. The running back can't make a decision on which way the, to, uh, to take the football upfield. Look at the total offense yardage. Philadelphia 185, the top offensive team, San Diego 55. You know, when we were talking to Fouch yesterday, he said the one thing he didn't want to do was get into third and 10 and third and 15s against this kind of a nickel defense that Bruni and, and Marion Campbell's defensive clubs are noted for, and that's what they've got. Fouch going deep. Keep Anderson from making the catch. Well, I tell you, this guy has made a big difference in this football team. He gives them all the tools they really need. Speed out of the backfield. He's just like a wide receiver down the field. Excellent football player. A 44-yard strike. A good throw, too. I tell you, now we're seeing Dan Fouts get on stride here. Now he's getting his timing down. And he reaches back and pulls from downtown San Diego to throw this one. And then you see Gary Anderson stretching out, making an excellent reception. Actually had to slow up a little bit to get back to the ball. He has a 52-yard touchdown reception this year, so he's got good speed. The amazing thing about trying to play against Fouts is you want him to have to bring the ball down once in a while and not find the receiver that he thinks is the hot. That's right, because he's got that great timing and the ability to throw that ball immediately. First and 10, and the little train has it. The flags are down. The play carries inside the Eagle 25, but I think they're going to bring this one back. Fouts belly lets you get time to get your your shoe strapped on correctly. You know what? He's throwing for the first snap. I tell you what, his his uh, passing game is predicated so much upon Illegal rhythm. motion, number 80, offense, first down. Is Jerry Mark right with the call? You know, one of the things that Dan Faust does so well is you see him every time he drops back, as soon as that foot hits, that ball is leaving his hand, and that's the key to their offense, is him being able to throw on time. Winslow was detected for movement. This whole team moves. <laughs> Talk about shaking and rolling. This bunch can do it. It's first and 15. Beautiful sunshine in San Diego. Good game. Faust going across the middle, and the little train has it at the 10-yard line. Lionel James makes some kind of a catch on Ellis. Well, I tell you what, Lionel James, again, is a complete player. He's the kind of guy who uh, you love to have on your football team because he gives you so many tools to work with. We're going to get an opportunity to see him here. He's going to come up on the left-hand side of the screen. And there's the Fouts pass. Squeezes right in between two defenders and holds on to the football, more importantly. At five, six and a half, Lionel James just broke the Lenny Moore record that's held since 1958 for yardage by a running back catching the football. And who would ever thought that a little guy like Little Train would do it? 
Boy, oh, he's something. He worked out as a wide receiver in spring camp, so he knows how to do it. Here's the option play. It's fumbled, and the Eagles have it. They can only get possession. Let's see if they're going to run with it. <laughs> Reggie White's going to run with it, that's for sure. <laughs> and who's going to tell him not to? The option was a play they come out with the option on the outside linebacker, and Reggie White, the giant defensive end for Philadelphia, came up with it. Is Marion Campbell? He's happy about this one, you know. But again, he doesn't show anything. You know, this is a dangerous play, and the reason why a lot of pro teams don't run it is because everybody's handling the ball a lot. Now you see, there's the opportunity to make a mistake. Gary Anderson couldn't find the handle on it, and here we're going to see Reggie White pick it up very nimbly, pick it up and take off running. You see that stride over there? That's pretty good for a big guy. In the last five games, the Eagles had no fumbles recovered. That's about the first takeover of that kind in five weeks. There's Reggie, and he's a happy guy now. Out of the USFL, what a great selection Reggie was at 285, six foot five. And he can rush the passer as well as anybody I've seen for a young for a young player. They're moving the Eagles back, and we didn't exactly get that call by the official. Must have been something that took place on the run back by Reggie when he gathered the blocking protection and took off. <laughs> Anyway, it's first and 10. The ball is on the 15. The Eagles got it, though. That's the main thing. Jaworski with a lot of time. Going for quick. No good. Just out of bounds. I tell you, all Mike Quick needed was that ball would be about another half a yard inside, and he's got uh, an excellent uh, gain on this play. Watch him here. He's looking over his inside shoulder. He just doesn't realize where he is on the field. He's trying to drag his feet a bit, but it's too late. That, that other foot goes out of bounds. You've got to get both down. He had one down. He made the catch, and Hendy was right inside his jersey. You know, John Hendy's come along very well for this club. Uh, a rookie. Uh, he's really playing quite well for them. Covering Mike Quick is something. I bet you breathe a sigh of relief when you get him out there on that white carpet outside the field. It's second down and 10. Jaworski of 14 of 21 for 169 yards. Straight handoff. Straight ahead goes Major Everett. Scores to the north of here, and I guess everywhere is to the north of where we are today in San Diego, but Seattle three, the Raiders nothing. Locked in more than combat in the AFC West. And that's a tight race in, over there. Look at the Rams. They're doing what they have to do to the punch for themselves. They're taking everything into their own hands today. 20 to 7 over St. Louis. We're notified the Raiders just got a field goal, so that is a tie game now. Seattle and the Raiders 3-3. Three, three. Shotgun time on third down and a couple. Zawarski, now he's sacked. At the 14-yard line by Fred Robinson. The third sack for San Diego. You really can't blame this one on the offensive line. Ron took a little bit too much time to get rid of the football. And when you see him hot-stepping back there, you know the offensive line's in trouble because they think that the ball is gone already. And that Eagle offensive line under Kenny Eyman has really improved this year. Their pass blocking has come some gigantic strides since the opening game of the season when the Giants ate him up. Lionel James is back to receive her Rand's puck. The little train. Look out, folks. It's a tremendous kick. But Lionel can run it back at the 33. Great putt coverage by the Eagles. That's right. Lionel's all dressed up with nowhere to go that day. <laughs> all dressed up and nowhere to go. Craneck was down very quickly for Philadelphia. Next Sunday, the doubleheader day for CBS. It starts with the NFL today. Then you can see Philadelphia against Minnesota, or some of you in the Southern California area in particular can see the Chicago Bears against Detroit. And then the second game, the Cowboys against the 49ers. And you know Dallas has clinched, but San Francisco will need it. Check your local listings and join us, will you, on CBS? First and 10, Fouts with the ball. Completion to Joyner. 
Joyner who can find an opening somehow and just stop there until Fouts gets him. The great thing about Charlie Joyner is he's able to always find the opening in those zones. Whenever they spread him out, and, you know, that, that secondary drops back a little bit, he slips in between the linebackers and the deep part of that secondary and then finds that little hole, settles down, and catches the football. So, so, so some 17, 18 years now. And he's in tremendous physical shape. But you know, if a young man comes in here, he's got to beat him out. He's got to be some kind of a young player. Oh, you. First and ten. The Chargers haven't been on the field a lot. Now they look like they're going to get into it. Lionel James inside the Eagle 40 to about the 38. I tell you, that Charger offense has been on the field so little. They don't even have any grass stains on their pants, hardly. They are 24th in offensive rushing the football. But that can be a misleading stat. If they have great people and one day they decide to go ahead and run it a while, they can hurt you. That's right. But, you know, then that, that entails a change in philosophy. And uh, as we talked about earlier, you have to change your attitude along the offensive and defensive lines. They average 30 points a game on offense. They're not about to change that, right? No way. Second down and six. Fouts. Kellen Winslow had it knocked away. It looked like it was catchable. Reichenbach was there, but Kellen didn't look like he wanted that one a lot. Well, Reichenbach reached over in front of him, and uh, Kellen seems to be uh, indicating that maybe he was interfered with a little bit, but, you know, everybody interprets everything a little differently, particularly when you didn't make the play. You think Kellen Winslow will be accepting Fouts' pass any longer, or is he going to be traded, do you think, number eight? Well, you know, it's a very difficult thing to, 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 to figure out at this point, but you know that they're a little disappointed that he hasn't caught more footballs this year, but I guess they're going to figure, hey, look, we'll give the guy another chance. He's been a great player for us. Third down and six. Fouts can't get the ball. He's trying for a joiner. Now, the flags are down. The sack came from the backside where Greg Brown... Greg Brown beat Jim Lachey right now, right off of the football, and came in and gave a good shot to, to uh, Dan Fouts in the back. Greg Brown, that's his 12th sack of the year, and Lachey is the rookie from Ohio State. The illegal block by the offensive line called against San Diego, so they'll have to give the football up here. Offensive pass interference, number 80, penalty decline. Fourth down. Kellen Winslow. We're going to get a chance to see what Kellen Winslow does on this play. He releases off the line cleanly, but now he gets into the defensive backs, and he is pushing a little. <laughs> yeah, Kellen, come on. You know you can't do that. He's a good blocker, all right. <laughs> a lot of picks and things take place out there and when those receivers are running through the secondary. Moschenko now back for his third punt. The left foot almost gets it blocked. I don't see a flag. Wes Hopkins did not rush him. Out of bounds at the three and a half yard line. Well, that's what he was looking for. I know he wasn't looking for that kind of a rush, but that certainly is the result he was looking for. Rojinko just drilled it right out of bounds on the fly. Let's take a look at this rush now and see what Ralph Mojinko sees when he's trying to get it out of bounds inside the 20. Close play. Those are the kinds of plays that can turn a game around very quickly. That was Wes Hopkins. When he's back in there, the Eagles seem to force turnovers. And, of course, he's one of the great tacklers, but this time, Mo won. What a kick. Drilled it. This is a tough territory for the offense. You can't make any mistakes down here. A seven to three ball game. Philadelphia scored first. And they've been unable to get on the board in the second quarter. Jaworski missing Kenny Jackson. And pockets begin to get pretty small. They're yeah, putting on a pretty good pass rush. It's getting a little tight now. And uh, that time, uh, Woody Lowe came in from the outside and put a little pressure on Marion Swamp Fox Campbell, my old teammate. He was a head coach in Atlanta in the 70s for a while, replacing Norm Van Brocklin as our old teammate. He once told me he would never want to be a head coach again, you know, he could. But when the opportunity came and Dick Vermeil decided to come with CBS, uh, the Swamp Fox said, well, I'll give it another shot. And he's certainly trying to do a good job with the team. And you know how difficult it can be sometimes when uh, things don't quite go the way you plan. But you just keep in there and you keep battling. Chuck Ian is down in the end zone where they were putting the rush on Ron Jaworski. Ian, the young man from BYU. 
it's the toughest time of the, of the year for a lot of guys. Your bodies are physically getting drained, and you're tired, and it's easy for things, for injuries to occur at this point in the season. And it hurts just as much if you're not going to the playoffs if it does if you're going to the playoffs. Physically, it's a very demanding sport. That's right. We're going to get a look at him here right in the middle of your screen, number 78. Let's find out what happens to Chuck Ian. Nice butt block right there, but he just kind of gets caught. He jumps up in the air and he gets caught in that pile, and that's where things can really happen to you. You have to be careful down there. It looks like he's grabbing his knee. By butt block, you mean butt him with the head? Yeah, you know, that's the best thing a nose guard can do sometimes, just jam that center with, with his head and uh, try to get some pressure right now on the quarterback. I just wanted to break your code and make sure we knew what you were talking about with that butt block. <laughs> Chuck Ian, the young man from BYU, as we said, they are very young, third year, and play nose tackle in this league. You've got mammoth traffic on all sides of it. He's feeling better now, he just said. It's uh, That's a position that's not for the uh, light of heart. Fred Robinson will come in to the nose tackle position. A lot of teams are going away from the 34 and setting up in that Chicago Bears 60 a lot now, huh? I think one of the reasons why is because it's so difficult unless you, you blitz to get any kind of pressure on the quarterback in the 3-4. Good point, Dan. Second down and 10. Eagles got to be careful down here. Jaworski throwing out of the end zone. Gets it on the outside. That's Major Everett. Still on his feet. Did he fumble? Let's see what they're saying. Chargers claim they've got the ball. They claim they had it, but the officials didn't believe him, huh? Jaworski threw that right off the D in San Diego in the end zone. But I tell you what, you take a chance when you do something like that down here. If you ever do get the sack, you got problems. I think that quarterbacking is one of the toughest jobs I can think of in the entire country. Being a coach is another one, and probably a television commentator is third. <laughs> First and 10, though, Jaworski now 15 of 23 for 182 yards, but the Eagles only have the one touchdown. Jaworski being rushed, gets it to Spagnola. To the 27-yard line. Well, I'll tell you what, they're introducing Ron Jaworski to the turf a few times this afternoon. You know, that he doesn't mind. As long as he knows where the traffic's coming from, he takes pressure and, and bumps and bruises as well as any quarterback I think I've ever seen. He's one of the toughest guys there is. I'm speaking of number seven, Ron Jaworski. His big spags. He's having a pretty good day today. He may go, uh, go in front of... Uh, Jordan from Minnesota for the tight ends and receptions. Yeah, we'll show you a graphic on that. The tight ends are in vogue. First and ten. The blitz is on. It's handled by the Eagles and intercepted by San Diego. Danny Walter still on his feet. Gets back to the Eagle 32 and I don't see any flags. Woody Lowe made an excellent play. Tipped the ball and then Walters was able to pick it up. You know why they feel the way that they do about Woody Lowe. He's a, a player that's always around the football. And here we're going to get a chance to see Ron Jaworski looking in, lets the ball go. Now watch Woody Lowe here. Tip it up, and there's Walters with the opportunity to pick it off, and he does. And now he turns around and heads towards the end zone. And like any good defensive back, he starts running across the field. Second, the second <laughs> interception for Ron Jaworski today. That's Danny Walters' fourth interception of the season. That's not bad right back to what he does the best. And now he's tackled from behind. I believe it was Brown coming around the corner. Greg Brown. Eagles have the football. Turnover to turnover. You think he's excited? That's the way. I tell you what, you get these young guys moving, you know, they get kind of excited about getting in and getting those sacks. It's dangerous. Now watch him in the left-hand part of the screen. He beats Lachey late. And now he comes around and bounces holding that ball a little bit too long. That's too bad for Lachey. 7-3. Eagles have the ball and the lead. If you think there's no room for improvement... Ohio State have a problem here with Brown. He's going to get beat here, and Brown's going to be able to make the stop here. Good pressure up front. Now you see him coming around late. Fouts pulls the ball down, and he flips it out of his hand. Were you an art major at Harvard? <laughs> <laughs> well done, Dad. All right. First and ten pass. Jaworski taking advantage of the turnover by San Diego. Hits quick to the 42. Derry Nelson makes the tackle. You know, Tom, the interesting thing about the way the game has gone so far is Philadelphia, the offense looks more like San Diego's than San Diego does today. <laughs> and the Chargers are playing pretty tough defense. Remember that Jaworski did not play 
against the Rams, against the Redskins, against the Giants. And he came in with the New Orleans game and got this team started. And the Eagles began to really fly when Ron was put back in and Cunningham, the rookie, was put back on the bench. Jaworski just missing connection with Jackson. You know, it's got to, in defense of, of what Cunningham went through, it's got to be tough for a young guy to come in straight out of college, not really out of a major program coming out of uh, UNLV, and then step into the pros and try to do everything just from the start. Even Bernie Kozar from Miami sure. got a little bit more of a break than that. And you know, the kid did a great job. Uh, he beat the Redskins uh, because he's a tremendous athlete, and he ran well, and he made some uh, fantastic throws, and uh, he's just a great talent that has to watch people like number seven for a while and work with... Marshall Broder and people like Sid Gilman, and he'll learn. He's going to be great. Third down and five. Spagnola has five catches already today. Jaworski has the ball thrown away. That's a lateral. He threw it back, and let's see what happens here. Major Everett, I believe it is, is recovering the Smart football. Smart move by the Eagle player, because that ball was live. Lee Williams put the sack on Jaworski just as he was trying to throw the forward pass. I think Ron Jaworski's feelings may be hurt more than anything else. He just got caught as soon as he turned around to, to release the football. He got drilled. Here we yeah. get an opportunity to see it here. Now, see, just as he's getting ready to let that ball fly on the hitch pass, he gets stuck. There's Lyndon King going down there for the stop. Here it is again. Boom, he gets it right there, and he almost hits Baker in the face, number 63, uh, with the football. Jerry Markbright is the referee. The play was ruled a backward pass. Recovered by the passing team. It's fourth down, and we have timeout, San Diego. We jumped right on that rule, didn't we? <laughs> I'm sure Jaws would like to jump on it, too, right about Jaworski now. Jaworski having a upset. tough time. He's been sacked three times, and he was in hard enough to almost count that a sack. Don't forget at halftime, all those scores that you've been wanting to find out about will be presented when Brent has the scores and highlights, plus the special studio guests, uh, two of my favorite people, one that you played with, Jim McMahon, the Chicago quarterback, and a fellow that I made famous because he threw so many passes over me, John Unitas. Well, I tell you what. All old, this and more are coming up at halftime. Old Jimmy's an interesting character. I love, uh, you know, the years that I played with Chicago, he's there for two of those years, and uh, we got to know each other pretty well, got to play a little golf together and all of that. I tell you what, he's a different kind of a quarterback, the antithesis of what everybody believes an NFL quarterback should be. Oh, I always thought that's what they said about John Unitas, too, so they're <laughs> good company together in the studio. Johnny U and Jim McMahon, the man with the crazy shades on. Fourth down, this might be the longest fourth down call we've had. Fourth and 31. James is back for the punt. Horan will be kicking for about his own five. Let's see if they go for the block down there, Brookie. Be careful with Lionel Little Train James. They go for the return. An average kick. Bounces out right at midfield, maybe on the Eagle 49, and Fouts and company come jogging back out quickly to set up. 48 seconds left before halftime. We would like to send along congratulations to Dick Vermeil, our comrade in arms here on CBS, he and Carol had a tremendous thing happen yesterday. Nancy, their lovely daughter, got married to Steve, a friend of ours from Great Britain, and we know it was a festive time, and we know that the coach and Carol and all are watching the game, and uh, relax, coach, and enjoy it. You deserve it. Little Train breaks the tackle. Lionel James to the 35. And Wes Hopkins is hurt. Little Train plays with so much desire, it's incredible, Tom. Most backs would have gone to the ground on that play. They were going to get an opportunity. Look on the left-hand side of your screen and watch what the little guy does. Excuse me, on the right-hand side. Bouts pumps a little bit downfield. Now he turns around, goes to Little Train. Now watch this play. There's a lot of determination and desire. He's not going to let anybody bring him down. And he's off and running. Excellent play by the little man. A 14-yard scamper. He had 75 catches coming in. This little guy can do it all. He really football. can. And now you see the kind of pass protection that Dan Fouts is getting. He's getting a little air around him and an opportunity to look downfield and read those other receivers rather than just going to the primary guy. This is Wes Hopkins. He's not going to let too much keep him out of the ball game. You know that. He's looking he, forward to that Pro Bowl appearance. He's the MVP defensively for this club. They think he's going to go to the Pro Bowl. And... Nobody deserves it more. He is that great player of today, that transitional player that's big enough to almost play linebacker 
fast enough to play any of the secondary spots. He is an invaluable member of a defense for the 80s. You, you're seeing more and more of that. You know, the, the guy in the secondary that's about maybe 210 or 215 mm -hmm. could easily go into the secondary or no, to a linebacking position, as you mentioned. He hit so hard, he might break himself up. I keep telling him, don't hit so hard, you'll hurt yourself. <laughs> it's first and 10. San Diego trails, but they're threatening. Chandler cutting under, nowhere near the ball of fast three that time. You know, let's keep watching on the left-hand side of the offensive line for San Diego. Let's watch what Jim Lachey is going through. He's a young guy, a rookie who's playing, you know, and that's a tough position. Left tackle is the toughest position to play on the offensive line. And I'm sure, you know, it's a hard place to set up and pass with that from, especially. Let's see what happens to young Lachey all day. Especially as a rookie against Brown, who knows all the... The swim moves and all the different techniques that defensive linemen work on. I'll tell you what, it can make life difficult for you at left tackle. That's some experience you're talking about. Second down and 10. Fouts being chased. Somehow throws it to Kellen Winslow. There's a flag down. Winslow gets to the 20 with a great catch. This one's Herman going. Edwards tackling, but there is a flag thrown down around the pass pocket. This one's going to come back. And you know whenever that flag goes down in the middle of the offensive line, uh, you know what it's going to be. Well, you ever forget Kellen Winslow in that playoff game against Miami in 82? Holding number 63, offense, second down. Jim Leonard detected the big right guard. You remember that with Winslow, though? Heart and determination is what you call that game for Kellen Winslow. Let's watch the right guard number 63, Jim Leonard, here. He gets a little bit of a grab on the jersey. See that, that left hand is outside the framework of the body, and he gets the takedown on Reggie White. It's too bad, because that was an excellent pass play by, by uh, Fouts. Looked like it was by Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Second down and 20. Fouts. He can get it back in a hurry. He gets it to Joyner. Joyner free. And now zeroed in at the 25 by Cooper. 16 seconds left before halftime. You know, it almost seems like the distance that they have to go doesn't make a whole lot of difference to San Diego. They can always cover the distance and get what they need out of their passing game. Here's Dworski's, here's, excuse me, Fouts is dropping back, takes that peak for Joyner. He's got him sliding outside, and he takes off upfield, and he knows exactly where he needs to go to get that first down. The Chargers just burned their last time out of this first half. Let's watch Lachey again, and he's having a tough job to do over there all day against Brown, but excellent there, excellent technique. You see him readjust that left hand and get it back inside. Those are the kinds of things a young guy has to learn some point along the line, and he's learned his lesson very well. He's got to push himself away from the table. He looks like he's going to be about a 290-pounder. Well, that's what he needs to be over there. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> You're looking at Fouts, who, by the way, had 306 yards in one half this year against Seattle. 306 yards in one half of football against the Seahawks. He, if you think he's dead like he perhaps had a tough first half, he can come back in the second half and blow you right off the field. Well, you know, one of the interesting things that you've always got to look at, though, is what's the effect of there throwing over 300 yards. There we Hi are. there. And, I uh, told you he was a big one. <laughs> Dan Fouts has thrown for 300 yards 47 times, and he's only, out of those out of those 47 times, he won 26 and lost 21. So it's really not that much of a key when you think about it. Do you miss being with the Bears when they're at their height of everything this year? I think you have to. Any player that's gone through uh, seven or eight years with a team, and you know all, of, all the folks there and whatnot, you've got to miss it, especially in the good times. Well, it was good for you to be there, and we appreciate the expertise you're bringing to us today. Fouts going for a touchdown and overthrowing Joyner. It's intercepted by the Eagles. Ray Ellis in the end zone. Excellent play by Ray Ellis. He really got up and got to that football. And that's the kind of thing a defensive back has got to do. You know, when you see that ball in the air, you get to thinking it's just as much yours as it is the receivers. And that's what Marion Campbell's defense are so good at, disguising what they're really in. And he, Fouts is going to go almost directly down the middle of the field. And watch Ray Ellis come over the top here and take this ball away from Charlie Joyner. There it is. Just took it away. Now, this is a team that averages right at 30 points a game. And the Eagles have held them to a field goal. That is some defensive job. It really is. But remember what the, the secondary was indicating to us yesterday when we had a chance to talk to all those guys. Mm -hmm. is that they, This is the chance for them to prove themselves against an excellent offense. And they're really looking to, to say, make a statement to the league that, hey, guys, we're serious about this thing. And as we've said to you before, don't give up on Dan Fouts. Between one half and the next is like a sunset out here in the desert land. You know what? <laughs> It can be tough. The time runs out in the first half. Some of the people are impatient, but we're not. Just take a little break and watch all the scores with our people with the NFL today, then come back for the second half.
Thank you very much, Brent. Here we've got a 7-3 to three score. I've been looking at my notes, and uh, the Chargers uh, in five games scored over 40 points. And my question is, uh, will the number one defense against the pass, the Eagles, break first, or are they going to shut down Fouts, who's the number one pass? Well, you team? know, the Eagles' defense indicated to us yesterday that that's their desire. That's what they really want to do is prove themselves against one of the best offenses in the National Football League. And so far today, they're doing it. And they're giving Fouts a lot of different looks, and so far it's worked, huh? That's right, and uh, they're giving themselves an opportunity to win. That's the important thing. All right, big fella, get taped up. We got three predator, and don't be fooled by... He looks like a choir boy. He's a tough little egg. The kickoffs haven't been as deep as he wants them to be, and this one goes out of bounds, and the Eagles will have to kick off from the 30. Here are some of those halftime stats. We told you were rather unusual. Let's look at them together. Total yards passing, the Eagles within two of the Air Coriel unit, 204 total yards to 182 turnovers, two for the Eagles, three for San Diego, and the time of possession incredible lopsided view for the Eagles, 20 minutes. Tom, you think about that time of possession, that directly affects what uh, San Diego's been able to do offensively. They have not had the football enough to really do anything uh, in, in order to get on the board. You know, you've got to have the ball in order to score, and they don't, haven't gotten it today. Now McFadden will be kicking from the 30 since the ball went out of bounds, so they will get good run back position for the Chargers, and Fouts will be burning it up in this second half. You can rest assured of that. San Diego only snapped the ball 29 times offensively in the first half. Fouts usually does that in a quarter. Here's the kickoff. At the 10-yard line is James. Tackled at the 32-yard line, but a lot of space behind Fouts, so he'll come right out throwing. They started the San Diego possessions. They're 26, to 37, the Philadelphia 41. That's when they got their field goal the rest of the time, except for the closing shot when they drove down and had the interception uh, from their own territory, and that's where they are now. 9 of 20 for Fouts, who tosses back to number 40, Anderson. Anderson makes about three and a half yards out over the 35-yard line before Anthony Gregg stops him there. You know, that's, that's the added dimension that Gary Anderson brings to the game for the Chargers is the fact that, number one, he's a good receiver, and number two, he can run outside with excellent speed. Let's get a, we, we're going to get a chance to watch what Tim Spencer, number 43, does. Let's watch his block and see how it uh, enables Gary Anderson to head up field. He's searching out. He, he gets a pop on Wes Hopkins, and Anderson goes to the turf. Anderson out of Arkansas, a number one draft, a 1B. Here he's running to the right side and gets straightened up at the line of scrimmage and dumped back by the Eagle defense. That's Reggie White. Well, I tell you what, Reggie White looked like he was at a rodeo that time the way he took him down to the ground. He is a pure force at left defensive end, and when Bigfoot, when uh, the big man was traded to the Los Angeles Rams for the Eagles, a lot of people thought, gee whiz, who's going to be the big pass rush? That's right. You know, this game is his 32nd game this year, so you can imagine the young guy's a little tired maybe, but uh, certainly isn't playing like it. Here it looks like they've got a mistake on the defense, and the Eagles are either going to be one man short. He's going to have to play linebacker. He may play the linebacker. I'll bet he'll be a pretty good job. He played nose tackle and put the pressure on. And now James has the ball in the flat, and a first down with a lunge. The Eagles were mixed up on personnel. Darby had to make the tackle from behind. That's right, because you saw a Lionel James running out there wide open, nobody to cover him, and West Chandler tried to make the play late, but uh, luckily Darby was there. The Swamp Fox is not going to like that as he gives his signal which is a lot more intricate than it appears. The Eagles are a very subtle defensive club. One of the best. First and 10. Fouts with time, going deep. Chandler is open behind Ronell Young. Danny Fouts looks like he's down. Ronell Young was beaten, and the ball is on the Eagle 11-yard line. Fouts is hurt. He missed all of two games and most of two others this year and has come back with that knee. He showed us that he has to wear a knee brace most of the time. Uh, and it was a gruesome-looking knee brace. And you're certainly hopeful there's nothing serious that's wrong with Dan. But he got hit a little bit late. You know, the, the pressure came in late, and that's what took him down. 27 touchdowns, and as we said, four games for the most part 
he didn't even play in, and he still has that kind of numbers. Here's a look at that knee. Now, to watch at the top of your screen, watch Jim Lachey get in a little bit of trouble here, slip down, and there's the pressure from Brown, and it hits him right on that knee. Boy, oh boy, you hate to see that. At the 35-yard line, the man with 47 300-yard passing days, 47 of them. He's had over 400 quite a few times, and right now he's on the ground at the 35, and the medical corps for the Chargers are looking at their valuable person. Mark Herman, the former Purdue slinger, will be the man that will come in. He filled in when Fouts went down earlier in the year and beat Kansas City. You can see him there limbering up. Well, you know the thing about Danny Fouts is he's going to get up and come back for you. And there he is jogging off the field. He's a tough guy. I broke in with his father, who was doing CBS football in those days, the San Francisco games. And now here is his son in his 13th year, one of the all-time greats, and heading for the Hall of Fame. We're glad he's not seriously hurt. There are the numbers on Herman. Six TDs, seven interceptions. And he did it for him when uh, Dan Fouts was out uh, early in the season. First and 10 from the 11. Straight ahead, Spencer. So we used to call an attitude check play, Tom. You know, you hand it off and just let your offensive line pound it up in there. It's good for the offensive line to be able to get back and get even with some of the people when they're not pass blocking all the time. There's Fouts on the sideline. Coriel is one of those watching and studying the quarterback. Fouts was 11 of 22 for 221 yards, no touchdowns, and the one interception. Spencer. That's Spencer's ninth rushing touchdown of the year. And he can put it away and lug it a little bit. That's right. You know, he's a big, big, strong back. And those are the kind of guys you need in your, in your backfield. When you get down to that tough territory, you need somebody to pound it in there. He's the kind of guy that can get it done for you. The big play on this drive, the 46-yard aerial from Fouts to Chandler behind Ronell Young. Thomas now trying to add to that lead. Boy, they came out of the dressing room, setting up and throwing it. Six plays, 69 yards. Got a flag on the play, Tom. Somebody right. must have done something wrong. That drive only took two minutes and 55 seconds. Holding number 57, kicking team. We'll replay the try. This big Timmy Spencer. We're going to get a look at uh, Tim Spencer's touchdown here. Watch the right guard and his excellent block. Boom, he hits it up in there. Nice block. And now he's going to give Tim Spencer the opportunity to cut back a little bit and head towards the end zone. And he's running over a couple of people on the way. But Thomas now trying to duplicate the extra point from kicking from about the 20-yard line now. It's good. And the Chargers came out charged up. And suddenly, for the first time, the Eagles don't have a lead. It's 10 to 7. The game that counts. About the other brace out that he showed us? Yeah, yesterday he showed us two braces. Now, this is the lighter of the two. And the other one he has that will cover his, his thigh and the lower part of his leg. And here's the injury. Now, watch Jim Lachey, number 74, get in trouble here. He slips a, just a tad. As man Brown gets off him and delivers a blow yeah. to the thigh of Dan Fouts. Moshenko now kicking off in the 35. He's got a tremendously long leg, and it gets to the three where Hunter has it. Eagles now trailing. Hunter, good run back. Look out. Herman Hunter clear over the 30. He's got a blocker in front of him. Into San Diego territory to the 45-yard line. Well, I tell you what, Pete Hohan saved the Chargers that time. Cooper had an opportunity to, to uh, make a nice block there and spring it for more yardage, but just couldn't get that last step. And Cooper is out in front of him and tried to convoy him all the way. A 54-yard return. You'll see Hunter here break the ball back to the opposite side of the field. Many times this is not successful because of the pursuit, but this time he breaks it out pretty cleanly. And you see number 88, Pete Hohan, chase him out of bounds. Cooper just couldn't get that block on him. Now the longest return for Hunter, he had a 46-yarder, but this one was big, a 51-yard return. Jaworski back to throw, a lot of time. Dumps it off. Little has it, the tight end that's in there. And Woody Lowe stuck him right away. 
Well, I tell you what, <laughs> Big Dave Little really delivered a blow on him that time. I don't know, but Woody Lowe's the kind of guy, again, that we talked about, as we talked about earlier, he's the kind of player that is in on every down and plays just as hard as you can. Little, number 89, is out of Middle Tennessee, picked up uh, early action the year when v Vito Cab was away from the roster. He's a big kid. That was only his second catch. He lowered his shoulder just in time and did get the first down. They're going to move the chains. And a Philadelphia first down. A 10 to 7 San Diego lead here in the third period. 11 minutes still on the clock. Jaworski is struck back quickly as Hunter brought out the kickoff 51 yards and Jaworski has picked up a first down right away. That's quick in motion. Ernest Jackson getting outside and breaking it open. Jackson fighting to the seven yard line, pulling Bird with him. Well, I think with that time, Bird was in flight. <laughs> Ernest Jackson's a tough running back. Carry Bird for about five or five or six yards that time when almost made it to the end zone with it. Watch him break out. You'll see him on the, the right hand side of your screen. Gets the inside play, ducks outside a little bit, runs through a couple of tacklers, and now he's in the open. And watch Bird try to kill Bird, try to jump on back on his back, and he just takes him for another five yards. A 27 yarder, almost a little bit of a veer. He just cut outside right. that block by the offensive line. Jaworski sprinting out. Major Everett's got it. Major Everett's in that he scored with the football. He scored. Major Everett out of the backfield. And the Eagles are back in front. He has been running down under kickoffs for a couple of years, and for him to get a chance, his day in the sun, so to speak, good reception for a touch. Again, here we're going to see Ron Jaworski rolling out, and they're really featuring this rollout today. He gets the ball to Major Everett, and this is all desire. If you want to get into that end zone, you will. He takes it in. They may have called that a fumble and recovery by Little to tie it in, but I thought he broke the, that invisible plane with the ball in his own hand. So we don't know whether it's going to be given to Everett or a recovered fumble for a touchdown. What we do know is the Eagles answered the call very quickly. It's 14 to 10. The Major Everett fumbles the ball just before he gets to the end zone on the one yard line. You see the ball right by Gilbert's oh. feet pop out and here comes Little across to recover. Little has made a Phillip. catch today and scored his first touchdown today at the 10 yard line. Lionel James, good coverage by the Eagles. Stops James at about the 25-yard line. A 7-3 game has suddenly become a little bit wild. San Diego scored, and so have the Eagles scored. It's 14-10. Don't forget Saturday. The NFL today starts it on a Saturday afternoon, and then the Redskins and the Cardinals at 3.30 Eastern time. Game that's going to mean a lot, though. The Redskins still alive, and the Cardinals might be trying to save their coach's job. That's right, I know they're hoping that Jim Hennepin will be around next year. Number nine, Mark Herman is the quarterback. The receiver falls down. It was James trying to run an out at the 40-yard line. They had some rain earlier in the week out here in San Diego, but I don't. I wouldn't call the field a quagmire. No, and you know, one of the problems, though, is when a new quarterback comes into the game, everybody's timing has to change because he doesn't throw the same as a Dan Fouts. He doesn't set up as quickly and all those kinds of things. So it's going to be an adjustment for the offense on this, on this series of downs. 14 to 10. Philadelphia back on top. Fouts is getting his knee ready to come back in. This is McGee, the option type running back. Here comes Fouts back out. You'll hear the crowd announce this. And you can look at that uh, right knee and see that he's got it padded up. He's got the big brace on now. Since 1973, this man has been the quarterback. And as United said, he's the best. I'll have to go with whatever Johnny U says. Third down and nine facing Herman. Good throw to Kellen Winslow. Winslow has the first down to the 42-yard line. Well, I'll tell you what, a big hoss like Kellen Winslow can make it tough on a defensive secondary. And I'm sure he's glad finally to get a couple of passes coming his way. 
Herman got it to him. Here's some scores from other games. San Francisco, 31 to 19. The 49ers still alive for the wild card. Indianapolis, 31. Tampa Bay, 23. Just alive. Atlanta, 14 to 13. And of course, the Eagles finish with the Minnesota Vikings in Minnesota, and there are a lot of grudges going to be settled in that one. Green Bay, 26. Detroit, 23. Both teams now are on the sidelines for the playoffs. Detroit had a great year, though, under Darrell Rodgers, his first. 30 to 24, Pittsburgh over Buffalo. Cleveland, 28-21. That clinches the AFC Central. We didn't think anybody was going to win that for a while. And of course, the Redskins won by three. And they're still alive. Mark Herman going for the corner pattern and knocked out of bounds at the 40 is Wes Chandler. Herman's a big, tall, gangly-looking thing, but he throws a very clean pass. He sure does. And you know, the thing that he did so well on that was the play-action fake. Anytime you can get a good, clean play-action fake, and here you're going to watch him fake the handoff to Buford McGee, turn around, and now that sets up those linebackers so they're not reacting downfield like you want, and it causes the secondary to hold up. Wes Chandler's open for a nice game. A 19-yard reception. Chandler can jump right out of the ballpark. He is quite an athlete. Obtained from New Orleans. What a trade that was. Herman back. Overthrows everybody. He's got a lock and load on that one. <laughs> I think uh, Pete Holand would have had to have been Kareem Jabbar to catch that one. Elsewhere here on the coast, the Raiders 6-3 over Seattle. Bitter battle there. The Rams 43-7. They're Rams. making sure that they go to the playoffs. Looks like the Rams may have come out of their dive just in time to be hot heading into the playoffs. You, you have to be that way. The man out of Purdue, Mark Herman. With the Denver Indianapolis. Here's the option play now run by the fullback. Anderson finally went out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Tom. Herman to McGee to Anderson. Buford McGee went down at the end of that play. He got tackled pretty tough. And that's one of the reasons why. Remember yesterday we were talking to uh, Keith Wilkes. They told us they were looking out for this play. It's dangerous. They are going to try to string it out to the sideline. However, Wilkes, number 51, gets caught inside. And there's Whoa. Anderson going outside. Clean field down there. Roynell Young has to try to make the stop. He can't. And good enough uh, that... Uh, Griggs comes across with a backside pursuit to make the stop. You'd probably want an early toss. If you can make him throw it right away, you've got to make him make shit. a decision right now. And if you let him get down that field a little bit, you're in trouble. The Chargers are moving it. The crowd's coming to life, too. A 14 to 10 Philadelphia lead. Seven minutes left in the third. Touchdown. strike from Herman to Joyner against the number one pass defense in the league. Look at Fouts. He's just as happy as Mark Herman is. Fouts was grinning too. Herman was given up on by Denver and by Indianapolis. They're not giving up on him in San Diego. Watch the middle of your screen. Here comes uh Wes Hopkins on the blitz. That opens up the middle for uh, Charlie Joyner, and he takes it into the end zone. They take advantage of the opportunities when they're there, and that's the whole key. Everybody that gets the ball in the second half gets a touchdown. San Diego 17, Philadelphia 14. And the Knicks Christmas Day on CBS Sports. Side by side, Fouts on the left, the great veteran, as we said, heading for the Hall of Fame, and Mark Herman, the 6'5", five, five-year man out of Purdue. Both of them are happy. Bozinko kicking off. This is deep. Hunter won't get this one out. And the Eagles will start from the 20. 17 to 14, 17 points is the average the Eagles give up per contest which is one of the best in the, in the league. So if they're to maintain that, they've got to shut down San Diego completely. That's hard to do. There's a look at the scoring drive. Two rushes, five passes, 74 yards. That's quick action, isn't it? Less than three minutes. Finally, boys, is that the 63rd touchdown for Charlie for Jordan? Charlie Jordan his career? Third team reception. He may never retire. I'm telling you. First and 10 handoff to Ernest Jackson. The former Charger out to the 27-yard line. 
You know, Tom, that's exactly the kind of running Ernest Jackson did for the Chargers when he was here. Every time he touches the ball, he's the, the kind of guy forcing the ball upfield and making that positive yardage. 858 yards he came in with, so he's got a chance with a couple of real good days to get close to that 1,000 mark again. And he stated that's his goal for this year, you know, and very seldom will you hear a running back state what his goals are, but his is to get to 1,000 yards this year. 60 yards on 10 carries for Ernest so far today, and we got a lot of time left in the third. Second down three. Inside handoff, Jackson out over the 30 for a first down, leaping to get it. I think the thing that made Ernest Jackson the most uh, irritated about being traded was that there were innuendos that he didn't have his personal life together and all that, and that was absolutely not true. I think that's what hurt uh, number 41 more than anything. That's right. You know, it's always in vogue to look for a problem that isn't there, and, and really, you've got to give these guys an opportunity to, to, to live their lives, too. And, and the indication was there, and it's a shame that it happened, and Don Coriel tried to make it very explicit that that was not the problem. First down and 10. Jaworski being rushed, dumps it off. This is Haddox. Haddox sprawled at the 37 and a half yard line by Nelson. Jaworski dumped it off, but there was a holding penalty on the play. There's a lot of pressure forcing him over to the other side of the field by Woody Lowe, and uh, as a result of that, somebody grabbed the hold back there. We'll find out who it is in a minute. Is Jerry Mark right? Holding number 66, offense. First down. Ken Reeves, the rookie from Texas A&M at left tackle. He's a young pup, but he's kind of big. Oh, he's going to be a good one. He's a good pass blocker. Most people come out of college, and the pass blocking gives them a lot of problem. But he actually replaced, replaced Kevin Allen, who was the number one draft, because Kevin Allen ran across Lawrence Taylor in the opening game and yeah. almost got pneumonia. LT can make life difficult for you. <laughs> First down, <laughs> and 20 to go on the 21. Jaworski almost intercepted. It bounced off number 36's shoulder pads. Herman Hunter. Jeff Dale had an opportunity there to pick it off and take it back in number 37, but uh, he was stumbling as he was reaching for the ball. You played against Jaworski. You came in with the Bears for that playoff game against Vermeil's team in, what, 79? That's right. And we'll always tell, I always tell coach <laughs> that they cheated us out of that one there. We'll never give him credit for winning that ball game. First play of the second half, they called back Walter with an 80-some-odd yard run. That's huh? right. And we never did find the penalty. Funny, in Philadelphia, everybody thought that was the right call. You know how that is. <laughs> second down and 20 now. On the 21. Jaworski getting a lot of pressure. He's sacked. Fred Robinson got the sack. That's the fourth sack of Jaworski. There's young Fred. He's coming on this play. Let's watch what he does against Reeves. Gives him that outside shoulder slap, and then he just tries to bull rush him or push him back in. Springs back inside, and that's what a, a good young defensive end will do that. Lee Williams offsides. Quite a break, really, for the Eagle offense. Jaworski has been hit a lot, even though he's had a very successful day. Robinson's upset. He said, hey, man, I had the sack. Give me a break. Probably a bonus clause somewhere riding the last couple of games. So. But I tell you what, those speed rushes can make life rough for those offensive tackles. The Eagle shotgun on second down. And 15. Pressure being put on. Jaworski gets it to the outside where... Little gets popped hard at the 36-yard line, short of the first down. Kenny Reeves slow getting up to tackle. Watch the left tackle take an inside step before he sets the pass. That gives Robinson the opportunity to get up field and puts him in poor position. That forces Ron Jaworski out of the pocket. And you see number 90 Robinson chasing him across the field. Those little steps can mean so Pass much to the offensive lineman. Number 82, offense. They Second down. They're calling Mike Quick for clearing out pass interference, which we've seen that called on San Diego now for a pick play by Ke uh, Kellen Winslow. Sometimes the officials are warned before the game to look for particular things, but if you took that away from receivers, San Francisco couldn't run a pass pattern. <laughs> and Marion Campbell knows it. Second down and 25. The Eagles must be very, very careful this series. Jaworski 
going deep for the sidelines and quick makes the catch. It's not going to be enough for a first down, but that's one of the great grabs you're going to see. Well, I tell you what, Mike Quick really makes a difference for the Eagles. He's the kind of guy who can go deep or take up anything else you can throw at him. Here we're going to see Jaworski get a little bit of pressure from number 90, but it's too late. And there's Mike Quick getting both feet in bounds this time, by the way. Excellent play by the wide receiver. Hindy was there, but it was a great throw by Jaworski. And you can imagine how Hindy, the young rookie, feels covering somebody like Mike Quick, <laughs> who right. can score very quick. <laughs> Third down, and nine call it. Keith Baker is in as a receiver, shotgun for the Eagles. The, the pressure's on. Hunter has the ball. Is still on his feet and drops short of the first down. He's back at the 38. But I'll tell you what, Brookie, that time that San Diego defense looked like Jaws hitting on somebody. They couldn't get loose in there, and Hunter just kept getting stuck in the middle. Jeff Dale made the tackle with a help from at least four others. Let's look in the middle of your screen, right around near the, just under the 40-yard line, and you'll see Hunter coming across. And boy, those guys, those guys in the secondary are really putting it on him. One shot, two, three. That makes for a long day. That's right. This is the duel between Lionel Little Train James and Mike Horan, the Eagle kicker. This is a tremendous punt. James all the way back, takes it at the four-yard line. Fumbles the football out of bounds. San Diego retains possession. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Little Train was out on the dance floor that time. <laughs> There's a flag down at the Eagle 43. It was a 58-yard punt by Haran, who the last four games has really just punted spheroids almost out of sight. Good hang time and good punch to cover. And you know what the, uh, the coverage teams have to be thinking, oh, no, don't tell me we have to run down the field again. That's kind of stuff that can get you out of breath quick. Well, last week, Marion Campbell saw a play where the young return man for the Washington Redskins went 90 yards and they called it back those things break your heart I'm telling you they can make make your career shorter too the awful thing that happened to the Eagles a week ago was they died inside the five-yard line and could have won over the Redskins and they end up losing it 17 to 12 those are disappointing losses Mark Bright we have a holding foul on number 32 on the kick on the receiving team after the ball was kicked while the ball was in the air it'll be first down terry lewis detected for holding so it will go from the point of the run back coriel doesn't like it 17 14. mike green here and anthony griggs this one wasn't called but i'm sure anthony griggs feels that it should have been <laughs> this lionel james we searched through Mike Burks and John McDonough searched through to find Terry Lewis as we couldn't find that, but we caught Green getting away with one. <laughs> you see Green down, I'm sure he's wiping his brow boy, going, boy, I'm glad they didn't see me on that one. And Anthony Gregg's just moaning like gangbusters. <laughs> First and ten, Chargers deep in their own territory. Spencer, hold up and stop. The Eagle defense is very good in situations like this. They like to squeeze you till you're third and long, throwing from your end zone, then take the ball. Reichenbach made that tackle. If you were ever going to merge two franchises, if you put he and Coriel together uh, with the defense of the green and the offense of this bunch with the Thunderbolts, would that be some darn oh, franchise? You, you're talking Super Bowl. So <laughs> Second down and six. Herman is three of five for 57 yards in that touchdown. That's Chandler in motion. Herman hitting Joyner to the 17-yard line. Looks like enough for a first down. I'm not sure what all the booing's about. I don't think they like the way that uh, Herman Edwards handled uh, their guy, Charlie Joyner. Well, you can be good friends with receivers until game day, and then you've got to decide whether your family's more important than the receiver. Yeah, he just kind of tossed him to the turf a little bit. Actually, it's Roynell Young, and he throws the old man down a little bit, but Charlie can jump back up. He's come back to more than that, believe me. That's what it was. It's his age they're mad about, right? <laughs> First and ten. Joyner has five catches. Spencer. 
dragging people with him for another first down out over the 30. You know, we talked earlier about the dimension that Tim Spencer brings, the big fullback, the guy that can take it up inside and has the speed still to go outside. And you mentioned, too, the fact that he can catch the football, and he just showed it there. He can he has excellent hands and is able to do all the things that can complement a running back. Well, yeah, you played with the Chicago Blitz and the San Antonio Mudslingers or Gunslingers or whatever they're called. <laughs> they still haven't figured How out How many good called. players were over there? Because there are seven of them on this San Diego you, team. The specialty positions, the USFL did a very good job of signing guys. I thought the weakest part of their uh, setup was the offensive and defensive lines. Was the money real? Sometimes. It's as green as this field. <laughs> On a first down toss, Spencer gets out to the 35-yard line before Reggie Wilkes gets him. I tell you what, though, Tom, we used to line up on, on payday and race to the bank, so if, if you can't, you check it and catch. <laughs> you're the last guy there, you're in trouble. Hey, you told me some stories about how you guys travel and all it sounded like when I was playing. Well, it was like going back to high school. You know, you get on the bus with your uniform on, <laughs> drive 60 miles to play the ball game, and drive 60 miles back without a shower. <laughs> so you can imagine what it was like sitting on that bus. <laughs> Don't leave home without it. <laughs> Second down. Boy, did I appreciate the match. Second ball league. Holahan. Now, flags are flying. He got what looked like a first down to the San Diego 42, but the flags are all over the place. Yeah, and they're all around Kellen Winslow, and Kellen doesn't look like he's too happy. It's going to be the pick play again by one of the receivers, but how does a receiver break out if they won't let you move through the defensive players. Well, that's, you know. Pass interference, number 80, offense, second down. The second call of pass interference against Kellen Winslow. That may be a first. That's, we're going to get a look at what Kellen Winslow does. And I think he gets an excellent stick. Look at the right-hand part of your screen. Crane act number 52 gets blocked. Kellen Winslow takes him to the turf. And as a result, <laughs> Pete Holohan is open in the middle. <laughs> Winslow, 6-5. <laughs> yeah, I guess he uh, he did hit him a little bit. The eighth penalty for 55 yards assessed to San Diego. Second down at 16. Here's the draw play. Spencer draws a crowd and gets to maybe the 28-yard line. We have not seen Dan Fouts come back yet since he left early in this third period. These are the closing seconds of the quarter. It's been quite an interesting quarter since it was so quiet the first half. That's the end of the third quarter. The score is San Diego 17, Philadelphia 14. We now pause for a word from your local station. Tom Brookshire and Dan Jickets out in San Diego. Mark Herman's first play of the fourth quarter. He's in for Dan Fouts. Will be a third down and 12 to go on the San Diego 28. He was sacked 16 times in duty this year. He only threw it 129 times. So Coriel knows his young quarterback might be vulnerable and might hold on to that ball sometimes. The Eagles will get after him this time. He got it off, and it's almost intercepted by fouls intended for Joyner. Excellent pressure that time by Reggie White, who came in from the left-hand side of the defense and really put pressure on Mark Herman to throw the ball early. The punting team will come on. The Eagles trail now by three points. And we get to a look at the lonely walk of Charlie Joyner. Mojenko will come on to punt the left footer out of Michigan State. See if the Eagles are trying to put on pressure as Cooper will wait at the Eagle 30. This is a line shot. If it hits right, this could be a run back. Now it takes a San Diego bounce. Going to be down right at the 25-yard line. A 46-yard punt, no return. Next Sunday on CBS, it's doubleheader day. Ball starts with the NFL today. Philadelphia against Minnesota for many of you viewers of the moment. Or some of you will get to see the Chicago Bears in Detroit. And then the second game, the Cowboys and the 49ers. And I guess Dallas will never forget a few years ago when the 49ers beat them on the catch on the last play of the game when Dwight Clark put San Francisco into the championship game to the Super Bowl, really, and Dallas went home. That's right. Yeah, Should yeah. be a grudge game, huh? Yeah, because those memories have a hard way of dying. First and ten, pass by Jaworski. Dumps it over to Haddix. Haddix, putting his head down, gets short of the 40. 
Dan Jiggins and I had a chance uh, Friday night to spend some time with Norman Brayman. He was in on Friday early, and he came in, and he's the new owner of the Eagles. Uh, he runs many businesses. They say the, his businesses grow some $500 million a year, but we found him to be very affable and really loving owning a football. That's right, and then we were trying to tell him what to do. <laughs> You know, what amazed me is how long he stayed with us. We told him for like four hours. Hey, he's a patient man. <laughs> he likes the program and does think a few players will put the Eagle team over the top. And he is one of the energetic young owners that has come into the league. And he's a Philadelphian and really loves uh, the things we all do. The good life in Philadelphia. Here's Nelson being helped out, the linebacker. They've got to get a little thin at linebacker inside now. Uh, Billy Ray Smith went out earlier. Jaworski on first and 10 from the 38. He's got a lot of time. Finds a receiver. Little is hit hard at the 40. Holds on to the ball. But John Hendy, the cornerback, unloaded. Little is in because uh, Spagnola went out with a foot injury and is not expected to return to the game. And Vince Osby came in on the uh, San Diego defense to replace Derry Nelson, who just went out with a uh, bang up or an injury. And Hendy's a good looking young defensive back, and he really timed it perfectly. And it brings up a second down and seven. A gain of three and a hit it for a little. Jaworski's back. He's got time. Quick is hit just as he tried Ooh. to catch the ball. By Danny Walters. Mike Quick had no idea that play was coming to him. I mean, he had no idea that defensive back was going to stick him like he did. But he bounced up and got back in the huddle. The Chargers drew back and played zone and just played the ball that time. Well, you see Quick with his head turned. That's the worst thing that can happen to a receiver. He, he gets that tough shot with his head turned. Look at that head snap back. An honest effort, though, by Walters, number 23. Nothing cheap about the shot. 17-14 San Diego, and the Eagles have a third and seven facing them. Tom, on that same play, though, you hate to see those defensive backs go to the head of any receiver that's cutting across. The Eagles call timeout. Swamp Fox wants to get it settled. Coriel was a lieutenant in the paratroopers, a private in the ski troopers. He is tough, but his players like him, and he respects them very much. His defense has played extremely well today, and his offense has run into a defense that is one of the best. It's third down and seven, and the crowd becoming very animated. Shotgun for Jaworski. He's got time. Haddock's out of bounds. Oh, make that Hunter out of bounds at the 46, short of the first down. Been a few waves. They just did a few waves here in the stadium. Slight curls. <laughs> That's right. Over 50,000 here. And it'll bring up a punting situation with Haran standing on his own 30. And you know who this is by now, don't you? Little train. No pressure. Away, trying for a sideline, gets a bounce. It'll be at the 18 and a half yard line. San Diego with a lead in the ball. Don't forget, on Christmas Day, college football, the Blue Gray All Star Football Classic, live at 12, 12 o'clock Eastern, 9 o'clock Pacific time from Montgomery, Alabama. Great players in that. And then the NBA, the Boston Celtics with Larry Bird and company against. The New York Knicks and a fellow named Ewing. That's live at 3.30 Eastern Time, 12.30 Pacific. And Pouts is on the sideline. The other knee, not the old injured knee, but the left knee was hurt. Herman is in there. Hits Hola hand for five or six yards out to the 26. Rams are going to win their division for the first time since 1979 when Ray Malavasi was there and they went to the Super Bowl and lost to Pittsburgh. Raiders were sort of backing down a little bit. Seattle was a team picked to win it all and 
They're trailing six to three. You know, Seattle plays the Raiders tough every time you turn around, though. Chuck They've Knox got their number. Is, uh, Knox is some good coach. Second down and three. The lateral pass out to Chandler, who's got the first down. It'll stop the clock as Lord L. Young bulldogged him out of bounds. There's 12.15 on the clock. Alex Spanos is the second year new owner for the San Diego team. This young man, not only is he a great golfer, he think he once won the British Amateur, but he started out with just a small catering business, serving workers and all, and he ends up with 11 corporations in 15 different states. He got an opportunity to meet him the other day. Very quiet, very direct man. Vibrant owners are necessary in this league. Anderson carrying the ball, cuts back, and gets out over the 37-yard line by putting his head down. Gary Anderson. You know, it's amazing that Gary Anderson holds up so well. He's, he's really kind of a slight guy, maybe about maximum 185 pounds, and he still takes a beating every game and, and comes back. Boy, can he turn the corner on you. Out of Arkansas. A lot of good football players that come from Razorback country. They've got so much young talent. And we told you before, the Eagles are the second youngest team in the league, and San Diego's got to be right there, three or four. Herman's back on second down and four. In and out of the hands of Kellen Winslow. Reichenbach was shadowing him. Reichenbach really didn't give uh, Kellen a, an opportunity to catch that when he was on him so quick. He's an upstate Pennsylvania fellow, too, you know, where <laughs> you grew up hitting people and playing good defense. <laughs> he was on, a, on Kellen like sweat that time. <laughs> Third down and four. The Raiders must have heard us, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> They're starting to pull it out now, 13 to 3. Chandler has four catches for 101 yards. Dangerous, dangerous receiver. Herman being sacked by Reggie White in the grasp is the call. Herman, drop for a loss. Number 91, Reggie White with a stop. Reggie White is uh, really building up his uh, sack stats for this, after this game. You're going to look at him from the left-hand side of your screen. Excuse me, the right-hand side. Now, let's watch where he comes into play here. Now, there is on the left-hand side. He's beating Jim Leonard. Moved inside a little bit, and then he grabs Mark Herman and throws him to the ground. He didn't play till the, like, the fourth or fifth game of the year against the Giants. He came in with 10 sacks. He had a couple today. And as we mentioned earlier, he's played 32 ball games this year, so you can imagine. Uh, <laughs> Bojinko is back to kick. This is a good hang time here. It must be four and a half seconds. Cooper takes it at the 25. Puts the ball away after carrying it rather dangerously for, dangerously for a couple of yards. Sievers makes the tackle. We got 10 and a half minutes left. And it's 17-14. With Ted Marshall Broder, the offensive coordinator, Sid Gilman is upstairs talking down to the bench, but it's the pressure if you feel it right now, it's on the Eagle offense. With 10 minutes and 50 seconds, they're three points shy. And what does Jaworski have planned? A pass. Complete at midfield. Kenny Jackson is driven back to the 49-yard line. Jaworski now has completed 25 passes and 37 he's attempted. Two interceptions. And the single touchdown. You know, Ron, Ron is really featuring that rollout today. You know, he's always getting out around the area, tackle area. It's like we mentioned earlier, Marcher Broder's kind of trademark is that he likes to take advantage of what your quarterback can do well and leave alone the things that he can't do well. Jaworski's doing things very well today. Clock is running. First and ten from midfield. The blitz was handled. Haddock makes a great catch on his hip and storms inside the 35. Mike Green had an opportunity to make the play early and slipped, missed the tackle, and John Hindy came up to make the stop. Haddock's making a great catch. A lot of people have thought he hasn't uh, looked like a number one draft, but that's some catch he makes here. Look right in the middle of the screen as Jaworski releases the ball. You'll see Green, number 58, come up and miss the, the tackle there on Haddock's. Vince Osby slips, misses the tackle. And here comes Dale Walters and Hindy to make the stop. Call it the 35, first and 10 going in. They're not in the plus territory yet. High formation. Play action pass. Trying 
for Mike Quick, and it's almost oh. intercepted. Mike Quick claims he was interfered with. Jaworski is down, and Jeff Dale almost picked the ball off. He almost did the same thing he did last week and take one back, you know. He, he had it in his hands, lifted up in the air, and just couldn't get back down in time to grab hold of that ball. Here we're going to get a peek at it. Now watch, you'll see Jeff Dale come right out of the, in front of Mike Quick, tip the ball, and almost get it back that second time. Look at him, he's fumbling. Ah, doggone, he missed it. And the key to the ruling is that they were both playing the ball so that Dale was really eligible to go ahead and That's try right. to get the ball like he did. He has as much right to the football as the offensive receiver does. He's a 212-pounder, too, Dale is, so he's a big, good-looking safety man. Jaworski now, second down 10, 9-19 on the clock. Blitz is on. The blitz forced Jaworski to throw early and missed quick by a mile. The blitz is on and the heat is on. San Diego's decided to send some people now. They sent the linebackers. I think you mentioned earlier, Dan, the 34 without sending linebackers is no pass defense at all. That's absolutely true. Yeah, you you got to look at what their defense has been able to do over the years compared to today. Giving up a little bit more passing yards than they like to, but they've been able to hold them down rushing. Of course, the flip side of that is Philadelphia's been passing more than they've been rushing. <laughs> For all the stats, this is a large play right now. Third down and 10 on the 35. Jaworski overthrows Kenny Jackson at the five. The heat was on again. I tell you what, they sent both inside linebackers on the blitz. They're trying to make something happen on defense now. They know they've got to keep that pressure on. This is Marion Campbell. Let's watch on the inside. You see 57 coming inside, and the other outside linebacker coming also. McFadden is coming on to try a field goal. Jaworski is the holder, and obviously he can throw. This will be a 52-yard attempt by McFadden. He's 2 of 4 from plus 50. This is going to be short and left. And San Diego's narrow margin persists. It's 17-14. Can any Don Coriel been in this league a long time? 13 years as a coach, San Diego State. By the narrowest of margin, he's got a field goal on the board, a 17-14 game. You remember the Eagles are 27th in scoring points. Marion Campbell knows that. This is good defense, great defense, against an absolutely awesome offense. And we're seeing that play out. Today. So you think that San Diego's been averaging almost 30 points a game offensively. And they've got 17. First and 10. Herman is the quarterback. And still throwing the ball away. James drops the ball when hit at the 45-yard line. Ronell Young made him cough the ball up. Little Train has already got 140 some yards in receptions today. <laughs> he's a in combined yardage. Combined yardage. He's a busy guy. One more game like that, and he would break he would break Terry Metcalf's total yardage record. St. Louis Cardinal must have been the mid 70s when Terry did that. 75. Mm -hmm. Second down and 10. 9:04 on the clock. Out over the 40. Go Spencer. And now San Diego must. Six yards. By Chew up some of the clock, left. get some first downs. Our Jaworski and company will be right back down the throat. Scores elsewhere. Rams laying it on St. Louis. Cardinals took one below the waterline sometime during this year. They were picked to absolutely win the NFC East by a lot of experts. It's really hard to figure out what exactly happened to that team. Or they just. Uh, all of a sudden, took a, a banking right turn and, and turned uh, the season off. Third down and four. This will be short of the first down as Gary Anderson hits it straight ahead. And now a decision is going to have to be made. Is the fearless leader of San Diego going to try for it, or is he going to punt it? Sure. <laughs> Which one, right? <laughs> a sea of flags are down. There's some. The zebras are gathered under Mark Bright at the 44-yard line. We have an illegal substitution foul. 12 men on the field. Defense. First down. Wow. 
illegal substitution foul. Well, when you need a little defensive help, that's one of the things you can do. That moves the sticks, and that's the one thing that Marion Campbell and Fred Bruni standing there to Marion's left did not want to happen. Timeouts remaining. The Eagles still have two. The Chargers have three. Herman has been the quarterback since the early moments of quarter number three when Fouts was injured. Straight ahead running. Gary Anderson to about the 47 and a half yard line. Eight minutes. Eight minutes on that clock. Richie White made the stop. You know, one of the bad things about uh, if you're on Philadelphia side of the field, one of the bad things that's happening now is San Diego is literally burning up the clock. And that does not give your offense an opportunity to get back out on the field. However, if San Diego does not score here, it could work to their disadvantage. And they are not a great running team. They may have to throw it a little bit, and there's always a chance there. And this is that chance. Herman back. Oh, good catch by Chandler at the 31. Hit by two Eagles. And Herman sort of had a hang time on that pass, but he got away with it. Watch just in the middle of your screen, you're going to see West Chandler cut back across the field on an in pattern, deep in, picks it up right in front of Herman Edwards, and there he goes down to the ground. Good play. West Chandler is such a classy, classy uh, receiver. Let's look at the pressure here now. What is Mark Herman seeing? Really nothing. A lot of air and a lot of space around him. Reggie White late, but nothing really uh, Reggie to speak White, of there. Reggie White was gang tackled. I saw, <laughs> I saw three different blockers trying to pull his shirt off. It's a first and ten pass. Chandler making a great reception. Now he's going for post corner for Joyner. And Herman Edwards comes over the top. Charlie Joyner felt that he was interfered with on that play. His neck got snapped by, by yeah, Herman, Cooper. And Herman Edwards is starting his 134th consecutive game as the Eagle quarterback. And that means experience. <laughs> That's it. He's a San Diego native and uh, one of the oldest cornerbacks in the NFC. And there you see him grabbing uh, Charlie Joyner around the neck. But, uh, they're throwing him in his hometown. What's the deal, Tom? <laughs> He's wearing a different colored jersey now though, from San Diego State. The Strangler. <laughs> <laughs> Defensive backs have to resort to that, especially in the end zone. He's been a great player. Maybe playing better this year than ever before. Needs two interceptions to be the all-time Eagle interceptor. Gary Anderson straight ahead on second and ten. The big offensive left guard, Eddie White. 17 seasons at left guard in this league. Right guard for a long time with Minnesota. 239 NFL games. The only person with more games in the NFL is Stinnerud, but... He's a kicker. He doesn't have to lock horns with people. Every I told play. Big Ed he's going to tie up Mick Tinglehoff's record. I told him the way he was feeling. Yeah. Maybe Tinglehoff will have a little dial stick and needles in it today. White's at the left guard. Nothing there for Lionel. James doesn't get much running left. They are still 5.52 on the clock. You know, to get back to Ed White, huh? he said his knees were hurting him all week and he really couldn't practice. And uh, I imagine after 17 years, a lot more things than his knees hurt. There he goes. He's beating his old teammate, Nick Tinglehoff, from the Minnesota Vikings. Thomas is in now to try the field goal. He cranked up a 44-yarder early in the game. This is from 46. This is about his distance, That's isn't it? He's not at the, the top limit of his range. Moshenko's holding the punter. Let's see. Ooh, it's good. Bobby Thomas. It barely cleared, but it took the field goal tie possibility away from Philadelphia. Now watch uh, Ralph Mojinko get the ball down. It's a high snap. He put it down very quickly. And there's Bobby with a nice follow through. And he did it for all those years at Chicago, and he's doing it out here now. Two for two, and the best team defensing the field goals in the league were the Eagles. They've had people miss them from point-blank range, and they've blocked some, and this time, Thomas is two for two. Well, I tell you, he just squeaked it in there, didn't he? It's as long as it, it makes it, though. That's all that matters. Doesn't have to be pretty. 
Scorecard doesn't have pictures. That's what they say in golf. I think that pertains to this. It's a good thing some of those scorecards don't have pictures. <laughs> <laughs> and now the Eagles have 5-16. A lot of time to get a touchdown on an extra point. Fouts has been on the sidelines. Timeouts remaining. The Eagles with two. San Diego, three. Fouts talking to Coriel. I ask him what he's doing now offseason. He's, he's in the money business, financial business. I said that figures that a quarterback would be working with money, but he and his brother uh, have a, a banking institution here in Southern California. I bet you they're doing quite well. Just his account alone is worth a lot. Rojinko kicking off. This is fairly short. Hunter's going to have a run back. McKinney fumbles the ball. Eagles possession at the nine. Herman Hunter forgot that the primary thing you have to do when you're returning kicks is make sure that you securely uh, have a hold of the ball, and he just fumbled it around a little bit that time. I can't think of anything more depressing for a return person though, than to fumble one knowing there are 11 screaming people coming down trying to recover the live ball, you know? And there'll be another 33 screaming people on your sideline when you make it there. Uh, correction, the ball is on the 14-yard line. Five minutes and eight seconds. First and ten. Jaworski in the flat. Hunter juggles another one and almost carries it into the linebackers. King almost picked that off. Some scores we'll cover quickly. The 49ers, 31-19, still alive for the wild card. Minnesota, Atlanta, both out of it, but the Falcons win a big one for Dan Henning. Green Bay, 26, Detroit, 23, both are eliminated. 30-24, Pittsburgh, eliminated. 28-21, Cleveland still alive. A lot of possibilities in the AFC Central. And 27-24, that's right, the Redskins are still alive. Jaworski dumping to Michael Quick, who stumbles over somebody about the 20-yard line. Dallas 28, New York 21. Both are very much alive. 13 to 3, the Raiders over Seattle in the fourth. 46 to 14. Hunter is down. An injury on the 40-yard line is Herman Hunter. Otho Davis and Dr. DeStefano. Ball is on the 22-yard line, and there are four minutes and 50 seconds left in the ball game. And as you know, the Eagles need a touchdown and an extra point. Don't forget, tonight on CBS, 60 minutes, Murder, She Wrote, Crazy Like a Fox, and Trapper John, M.D. You had a chance to play a role on any of those shows, like... <laughs> Trapper John or anything? Did anybody ever come to you, big fella? No, so, but I've been accused of being crazy like a fox. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's your Ivy League background, you ask me. That's a good one to slip in. <laughs> it's a third down and two facing the Eagles. What are you thinking about strategy-wise now? Are you going to... Are you going to peck around a little bit and just get down and go for the touch, or are you going to try to get it all at once? Well, I think that they have to go for clips, you know, large clips of yardage. The time is running down now. they got four minutes and 50 seconds left to go, and they've got to make something happen pretty quickly because you can't take the chance of running the football and thinking that, you know, you're going to run out the clock at the same time while you're going to go down and score. They've got to get the score first and then worry about what happens after that. Marion Campbell watching his offense on third down and two. Jaworski out of the shotgun. First down. Quick has it, still running with it. Quick to the 40-yard line. John Hendy trailed him all the way, and Quick still caught it. You know, they're doing exactly what we talked about earlier. They're taking those little chunks of yardage, getting the catches, and then turning it into something else. Now, here we're going to get a chance to see Ron Jaworski drop back and get it to Mike Quick. Over the left-hand side of your screen, there's Quick. He turns it upfield now and makes more yardage out of the play than what appeared to be there as it began. And with this much time, if you have to run a quick draw or something, you can still do that to make people play you fairly honest. Dvorsky this time coming under the center. 
on first down and 10. He's going to throw it. The blitz is on. Quick has it inside the San Diego 40. Spotted at the 39. Seven to 82. Gilbert just could not get to Mike Quick fast enough that time, and uh, Mike did the smart thing and got out of bounds. He's now got seven receptions for 92 yards. The Rams clinch the NFC West emphatically, 46-14. Quick now has seven for 92, and that was a 21-yarder. 3.39 left here in San Diego. It's a fight for survival for next year's contracts, folks. Jaworski on first down. Going for it all. The flags are down. He was trying for Mike Quick, who was covered. But I believe little the tight end was interfered with. Danny Walters had Quick. That flag looked like it came from the other part of the end zone, Brookie. I don't know where, where the official was when he threw it, but... Uh... Oh, and it's against Philadelphia. Marion stalks the sidelines. Number 89, offense, first down. Dave Little called for offensive interference. That's two on each team today. I don't know if I've ever seen the officials looking quite so much for that. Just kind of evens things out. Yeah, start all over again. It'll be first down now in 20. Jaworski has thrown 45 times, completed 29 for 334 yards and a touchdown. Tough call here. Leonard snaps it to Jaworski. Heading for Kenny Jackson and it's out of bounds. Closely covered. You know, Wayne Davis, number 20 in the secondary, came close to getting a pass interference call that, on that uh, that play. Luckily, he got back off of Jackson soon enough so that the officials didn't call it. Now, watch this play here. Watch number 20, Wayne Davis. He's Number one, he's getting his good jam on, on Jackson. But now, later on, as Jackson gets into the pattern, he is too close to him, gets that arm on him right there on the shoulder. But the key thing is he's looking back to the ball. And that's that new rule this year that's really uh, made life a little bit easier for those guys in the secondary. Second down and 20. There is no easy life in the secondary. Take my word for it. The ball is on the 49 shotgun. Jaworski overthrowing everybody. Kenny Jackson intended. It looked like Danny Walters was the receiver in that play. Sometimes in the offensive plans you can change your roots when you're closely covered there may have been some communications problem between Jaworski and Kenny Jackson well if it's going to happen for Philadelphia it's got to happen right now they're running out of time 322 you might bring a receiver across the middle clear out and bring them across without Offensively committed interference. I will take it deep. I, I think you've got to do that now. Third down, 20. Jackson. Intercepted by Walters. The third interception by San Diego. Walters is run right into the Eagle bench. Uh-oh, flag on the field. That quiets the crowd very quickly. It has that quieting influence when you see that little yellow marker out there. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Number 73, Philadelphia. First Steve. down. Steve could have got that extra little blow on him on the sideline. After the run back. Yeah, he just would have let him know he cared, though, you know. Took him beyond the sidelines and dumped him right in the eagle bench. Watch the left guard number 73 after the interception is Steve Kenny. He's fighting his man pretty good. Good protection. No problem there. It's just that Kenny Jackson got squeezed in between two defensive backs there. And there's the ball by Walters. He recovered the ball. Now let's watch what happens. Oh, can't get it. 
But there's Steve. It was happened on the run back. First and 10 on the 32. San Diego now can sew it up. About three minutes left. That was Spencer straight ahead. And they will not stop it. It will stop for the two minute warning. And the Eagles still have two timeouts, but the Eagles no longer have the football. The San Diego team lost to Houston on the last play of the game with a 52 yard field goal. They have lost some to go seven and seven that are incredible the way the Chargers managed to lose them. But they're not losing this one today. It doesn't look like second down five Spencer again. First down. That makes a lot of sense. They're going to go to their big back and let them carry the, carry the rest of this game for them. The Eagle defense has been on the field a lot in the second half. 2.16 on the clock. The Eagles burn one of their two remaining timeouts. The Eagles, they beat Washington, St. Louis twice, Dallas in Philadelphia, Buffalo, Atlanta. Marion Campbell's team lost to the Giants twice, one in overtime. They lost to Dallas in Texas, Washington last week, New Orleans, the Rams early, San Francisco and Minnesota. The Raiders have clinched in the West. 13 to 3. The wild card spot is still up for grabs, of course, with Denver hanging in there. This is the time of year you don't want to be thinking about going home for Christmas. And, uh, it's, it's unfortunate. Some teams were so close this year, such as these two teams out on the field, and uh, they won't be making any uh, late season stops anywhere. The Eagles have played it very close. They've taken one of the great offenses in football and shut it down to about 20 points. But when the green and white had to have points, they couldn't quite come up with them. Don't forget, coming up, 60 minutes except here on the West Coast. Look at Dan Fouts, the legendary one. The best defense against the pass, against the best pass offense, and I think it's pretty much been played just like that. Straight ahead, Gary Anderson. You know, I'm sure these Charger offensive linemen appreciate this opportunity to tee it up a little bit and uh, see what the defensive line of Philadelphia is made out of. The Eagles burn their last time out with 2.09 on the clock. And that's what you really want them to do. You know, you, you've made them run out of timeouts now. You have the opportunity to take it in and score and put the game out of, uh, out of reach. I guess the Eagles would be looking for some Number one draft that would be the, in the form of a Byers or yeah they'd like to get that bowl from Auburn but they'd like to get that big back who can uh, do all the things that a uh, Tim Spencer can do. Marion talking over defensively what they can possibly do to stall San Diego somehow or get the turnover. It's hard to get them this late in the game. Don't forget Saturday the NFL today starts it off. And then the Redskins play the St. Louis Cardinals. 3.30 Eastern time. And then on Sunday, it's double bubble time. The NFL today starts that off. And then it's the Eagles against Minnesota. Or some of you will see the Chicago Bears against Detroit. The Bears, of course, won over the New York Jets. And then the second game will be the Dallas Cowboys and the 49ers. And the 49ers have got to win. Check your local listings, though, and try to join us. Second down and seven. Just don't fumble the snap. That's what everybody's saying. Spencer bucking to about the 15. Timeout now will be taken for the two-minute warning. It'll be third down when we come back. Early in the third period and his kept the team going third down and six the toss back to Anderson Anderson breaks a tackle and gets the first down inside the Eagle 10 yard line Gary Cobb got Jersey but Anderson got the first down 
Gary Anderson has that exceptional speed, and when you get to turning the corner and running sweeps, that's what you've got to have in order to get it upfield. A nine-yard burst when the Chargers needed it. You might recall they lost to the Denver Broncos when a overtime field goal attempt by Thomas was blocked, and Louis Wright picked it up and went 65 yards with it. So I think to stall down there and think about getting one blocked and lose it that way would scare Coriel to death. First and goal from the six. Now they're going to go ahead and try to put it away. And the crowd doesn't like that. I don't think Don Coriel cares. He says, hey, look, this is my job you're talking about. That's a smart thing to do, you know, and uh, sometimes it's a little tough to understand that you want a little bit sure. more action. But the whole key is to win the football game. The Eagles are a good young football team under Marion Campbell, and a good draft and a training camp for some of these young players, and they can play with anybody. But nobody can do it with mirrors. This team was loose the last couple of days. We watched them walking around, laughing and talking. The Eagles came in, and they seemed to have a real purpose. I felt like they were serious about playing the best game for Marion Campbell they could possibly play. They're just a little short this time. You know, San Diego had a, a reason for playing uh, today and playing very hard. They're uh, trying to help their coach out also, and uh, with that offense, it's hard not to. Once again, the final score, San Diego 20. Philadelphia 14. This is Tom Brookshire for Dan Jiggins saying so long from San Diego, California. Coming up next, the NFL Today wrap-up show with scores and highlights. You've been watching CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League.